go. Welcome back from the break. Yes, you were just watching the B stream. It is in fact live. It is 3-3. Falcons are up 1-0 in the series, so that one will turn out to be quite an interesting matchup. But speaking of interesting matchups, it's time for us to dive into our final game here on the A stream. It's Virtus Pro taking on Bleed. The implications for this, Jesse, are actually pretty big. Oh yeah, both these teams really want a win here because if you lose this game, regardless of who you are, you will be starting your SI run in the lower bracket. That means one life. That means no matter what, if you lose, you are going home. No team has ever won SI starting from the lower bracket. If you win, the implications are slightly different. Bleed will still be in the upper bracket if they get the victory here over Virtus Pro. However, Virtus Pro will lock down first place in their group, taking that spot away from W7M, which will give them an extra round. It'll give them a buy through the first round of the upper bracket. It's kind of exciting, actually, thinking about the fact that there are so many implications oh, for sure. this. It's, it is a very, very close series. There will be no doubt about it. Let's go ahead and talk about Bleed. A roster really coming into this that many were kind of thinking, hey, was it a fluke? Mm -hmm. were, were they going to be able to back it up? Ollie, I, I think we've answered it. I feel like we asked that question of a lot of teams at the moment. We're asking, are they, you know, are they the real deal? Are they going to be able to come in to do this again? Obviously, the big change for Bleed coming into SI was bringing Julio on as the coach, and it seems to be working quite well. They seem to be able to replicate some of that form that they found at previous majors, namely Atlanta, yep. and almost better it in some ways. They've got some good results against some good opponents here. They are in a very tough group. They were able to pick up a map here um, off W7M. They were able mm -hmm. to pick up a result against Liquid. So you start to believe, you know, this team is the real deal. It is the real McCoy, to be fair. <laughs> they have they have really turned up time and time again. Jesse, what have you thought about some of the individual performances? Reaps is a player that, mm. in APAC, is probably one of the sharpest guns. Yeah, I think two players who have really stood out to me and impressed me have been Reaps and Mentalist. These two players have polar opposite play styles. Reaps is incredibly aggressive. He's this young fragger. He is nutty good with the sensitivity and with his kills. And Mentalist, he's the old guy. He's the hard support. He's not supposed to be getting all those frags but he has been playing really well. And the thing about these two is they're not just complete opposites, but they also complement each other yeah. so, so well. Reaps wouldn't be able to be the monster on entry that he is, 18 and 12, if it weren't for Mentalist droning in behind him and giving him that support. And Mentalist wouldn't be able to have the second most clutches out of any player at the Six Invitational if it wasn't for Reaps on the roam, coming back, getting those flanks, causing disruptions in the attack, which will enable Mentalist to go for those clutches. So I've been really impressed with those two, how they help each other out despite playing completely different roles it's been really impressive to watch. Seven clutches between them as well. That's wow. a lot of power that you've got there. Top through bottom, you've got it at the top, you've got it at the entries, and you've got it at the end, you've got it in those supports. The exactly. other thing that is incredibly impress impressive, you touched on it there, is the sensitivity. We were talking about this in the green room the other day. I think Reaps uses about this much of his mouse mat, and if you watch his hand, it's tiny movements and he's just pinging heads. It's honestly some of the more wild things I've seen. I saw the it's point the of only the pro that does it. He's the only pro that does it. Watching him in the scrim in the back room, like from behind him, it is absolutely <laughs> terrifying to see how good he is. But let's go ahead and start talking about a roster that has certainly earned their stripes here. Uh, we were umming and ahhing coming into this tournament, Jesse. We weren't entirely sure what we were going to see, but they, they've delivered. Yeah, I was a big v, uh, VP believer coming into this, especially yeah. with you know, the meta changes that we're seeing, things kind of slowing down, Tubrow coming through. Um, and what was shocking for me, even uh, coming in as a VP believer, is their ma uh, map pool. Incredibly changed versus what we've seen. VP have been the static team time and time again, banning the same maps over and over again, but we're seeing Border come out for them. We're seeing Skyscraper. We're seeing all these new maps come forward for Virtus Pro, and it's been a breath of fresh air. We've seen a lot of players really start to get into their groove. I think Virtus Pro have gotten better and better and better with every series that they've played, and uh, this could be the moment where they pop off and finally secure that first place in their group. I think it's a good time to be a VP believer. The stock is surely going to uh -huh. go up. It surely has to. You look at the performance that they're putting in top through bottom, it's a very well-rounded team. For me, VP are one of the best teams at those fundamentals that we often talk about. Let's get the basics right. Flank drones, opening breaches, getting utility. Like, this is bread and butter for VP. They play in a slow play style, methodical, and it allows them to be able to do a lot of those things and not really miss them. Stuff doesn't tend to slip through the cracks. I hope I'm not setting them up for a big fall here today, but for me, their fundamentals have been spot on. If Reaps and Mentalist were the players that you were looking out for on Bleed, do you have players to look out for on VP? 
Yeah, I think players like Pasha and Dan have been probably the two that I've noticed the most from. I think on defense, they can kind of play different styles, but still have a huge impact on one another. Dan has been a real rock, put him in a tough yeah. position, put him in a, a room that he needs to hold down, and he'll be really, really confident of that. He's also a player that's gotten a lot better throughout the tournament. His last couple of games have been fantastic. And then Pasha, I think he just brings that energy to Virtus Pro that they maybe haven't had in previous years of this roster under different organizations. I think he's been really, he's added that spice. He'll yes, go yeah. for flank sometimes he'll do things that you're not expecting almost like a Philippe Hawks type play style reined in a little bit but I've really enjoyed him coming through from Virtus Pro I think just adds that little bit of flavor to what can sometimes be a very rigid team that's fair and to be to be completely honest I remember watching the green room for the W7N game and he was losing his mind Pasha was absolutely losing it mm -hmm. every time they went around he was up and about for the rest of the team now I think we might actually have time to do this generally we don't but I want to theory craft the maps really quickly, Jesse. Ooh, okay. Where do you think we're going to end up? Gosh, this is a tough one because uh, for Virtus Pro, they've got such a, a brand new map pool. I do think though for, for, for Bleed, it should be very obvious. They've picked the same map in games one, two, and three. They have always gone for Oregon. So I already tweeted out, actually. I'm expecting a very simple Oregon pickup for, for, for Bleed. Yeah. Virtus Pro, very unlikely to ban it, in my opinion. So yep. uh, I expect Bleed's pick should be obvious. Ooh, that could be really interesting if we do see a ban. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go to them. And Oli, maybe you can break them down for us. The Matt Vito's for this matchup. Cafe Wait, Labs. they banned oh, it? Get a Jesse. <gasps> Jesse, come okay. on. You're better than this, bro. Okay, you know what? I like this from Bleed. <laughs> I, I didn't expect it because they have played it every single game so far, but this is arguably Virtus Pro's best map. So although you're confident on it, you're banning it against your opponent, that's saying that we trust our own map pool. We can play more than just Oregon. That's a confidence uh, ban in my mind. I like the skyscraper pick as well. I think mm -hmm. that Bleed have obviously gone into this with their eyes wide open. Historically, it hasn't been a map that VP have preferred, but they have started playing it. They have started leaving it open as deciders inside of best of three. So there is uh, certainly some recent footage to go off here for Bleed on that skyscraper pick. The bank is the one that kind of worries me because yep. Bleed have left that open. It is a fantastic map for VP. That much cannot be understated. It is their highest pref. I'm very surprised to see that there. Certainly. I mean, this is a map that every team in Europe tends to ban against Virtus Pro. It's not one that anybody likes to, to bring them on. I will say it's it's been relatively comfortable for, for Bleed. They did beat M80 on it back in Atlanta, if you'll recall that game. Um, not a ton of plays here at SI. They've yet to play it, but still, I think it's going to be a map that they can at least contend with, but VP are very scary there. It's kind of crazy the fact that I saw Bleed ban out Oregon <laughs> after what we said. That is still baffling me. It's actually yeah. quite incredible, but you know what? We don't have to theory craft anymore. We don't have to worry about it because we are getting into game number one. We're headed to Skyscraper. And yet another duo that has never worked together before. I am with the Aussies today. We are former colonists. Are we? Yeah, of oh, the UK. That's no. true. I forget about the motherland we are, sometimes. We are the colonies. <laughs> Except we have shed the Union Jack from our flag. And we still maintain it. Oh, well, it is what it is. Big game, though, of course, and for what will be the last game for stream A, Virtus Pro and Bleed. And a lot on the line, Parker, as well. For Virtus Pro, they can finish anywhere from first to fourth. Yeah, there's a lot... <laughs> There's a lot for us to go through, and obviously it's difficult for us to say it when there's no graphical asset to help us along the way. So instead, why don't we just wait and then talk about it after map one, or even have the desk go through it, frankly, because it's more their job. <laughs> Either way, we'll go to Japan. Skyscraper on the board first. Bleed has been a surprise, and I feel like there's been a lot of oxygen expended talking about this Bleed roster. But on the other side of the screen, I don't necessarily think there's been enough of a conversation about how Virtus Pro has seemingly bounced back. This is a team who's came into this event with expectations quite low. They kind of snuck their way into SI. They haven't looked anything like the way they used to when they played under the Team Empire banner. They've been, in many ways, a shell of their former selves. But Virtus Pro has had flashes of brilliance so far at this event. Some surprising results. They go up against Bleed, and really, it's two teams that I think have surprised a lot of people facing off. I think especially for Bleed in the group that they've, they've been in, when we got the groups initially, W7M, Team Liquid, Virtus Pro, M80, 
Yeah, admittedly, for those a little bit unfamiliar with Bleed, despite the fact that they made a name for themselves back in Atlanta, obviously many would have had them as being the team to get grouped. Well, they have avoided that. Of course, the catastrophe that is M80, the spot fire that they are as a team, they go out in last. So the good news in terms of this particular match, we don't have to worry about, will they, won't they go home? It's simply, will they qualify for first if you're Virtus Pro? Will they get a higher seed if you're Bleed? So both teams at least still have something to play for. For Bleed Esports can go as high as second place place in terms of what that means of course if you avoid fourth place you get to go straight towards that top end of the bracket there's that wonderful that fish and of course there's a mannequin now involved as well lots happening for bleed esports but nevertheless for virtus pro they can win doesn't matter how three maps two maps doesn't matter they'll go top of this group yeah is there a prop department that bleed employs for these things i mean how do you get a mannequin like i understand <laughs> the fish you go to bass pro shops you buy a fish it was 25 bucks whatever you name it joel excellent how the hell do you get a mannequin? I don't even know where to Does get that get through customs? I, Probably not. Uh, surely they must have bought it here, right? And then if they bought it here, how do you get it home? Ten seconds to go. Do they bring it home? <laughs> I would hope they drew so. They a face on it. I, mean, I, I don't know. I will say back in, the, back in the early days, I remember when people used to get in trouble for having props on the desk. And now every team seems to bring some kind of stuffed animal, good luck charm, etc. It's nice to have that level of personalization. First round, only 15 seconds in, and Hoven goes for a spawn peak. It's answered with an EE1D by always having the lion burn one of those pieces of the gadget early on. Not necessarily great, but if it keeps somebody alive, then it's definitely good. I was kind of touched a bit on the desk. No Oregon here from Bleed. Clearly a map they've been playing a lot of. Banded out, something that Virtus Pro probably were okay with. But Skyscraper is one that's quite interesting for me, especially for Bleed. They're not the best attacking team and they can get stalled out. In fact, they're second lowest when it comes to planting. Fortunately for them, on the defense right now and Aspie can get aggressive. Nice little run out from Delivery. Catches Dan off guard and that's first blood from Bleed. There's a Nitro cell that goes out to slow down Shepard as this tea and karaoke bomb site will necessitate some map control on the other side of the top floor. And that's where Hoven is going to play over towards exhibition and office. Another Nitro, or another Nitro cell goes out, another E1D goes out, and the immediate follow up as Virtus Pro continues to march onward. And obviously, Shepard is going to be the focal point for that with the diffuser in hand. He lost half his HP to the explosive, but Virtus Pro are bleeding bleed dry of utility at this point. Which means that for the remaining half of the round, which we're just about to hit, Bleed is going to have to engage in far drier gunfights. Yeah, but really good credit here for Bleed is that it's played one half of the, the game so far, the round in one side of the map. Now they all have moved together, same pace, same unit in terms of the formation, all back towards Tier and Karaoke. So at least they're kind of all singing one tune right now. But Hoven, well, maybe his tune is a little bit off note, losing his life, the Warden, especially someone you want on site who can stay alive longer, have more of an impact, especially if there's any flashes that come out later. We saw flashbangs being used early on all three tossed out by always Pasha's has two remaining so value for a warden when that execute comes huge fortunately he's one of the most integral operators to have during an execute they won't have that another operator whose strength only increases deeper into the round is the Monty so if Shepard stays on this operator and bleed continues to lose players then Monty is gonna get stronger the advance is met by a Goyo canister, and Turdster will slow them down on the balcony. He always waits out the fire and gets killed for a beautiful shot from Turdster, who has been excellent so far. Yeah. Advantage for Bleed right now. 4v3 with 25 seconds left. Trying to push up Black Stairs. Aspie gets the initial kill again. Joystick trying to also go for a trade. Eventually got one at least on two reaps. Makes it a two versus three time. Certainly a factor. Shepard, yeah, doesn't have that gun, but the pistol can try and do its job. And that's something that probably is required now with lesser and lesser amount of teammates available. Really strong defense from Mentalist on site to stop that very final push. So the four final players of Virtus Pro. One was downstairs inside a restaurant, gets killed on the stairs heading up to the top floor. The other, on balcony, dies to that shot from Turdsta. Pushing towards gold from Dragon Hallway is the Monty of Shepard. And then Joystick is in Geisha. So you've got four players remaining, all effectively scattered throughout this map. That was the run out from Aspie that you talked about. Now, if you're going to have a Monty get into the bomb site, get the diffuser down, usually you want a bit of an escort. 
Shepard was left to his own vices. And as you can see, Mentalist inside of gold gets the isolated pick on a joystick who's all on his own in Geisha. I don't know if, if you had joystick there solely to cut off a potential rotate from karaoke into the T component, which is where Shepard was bringing the diffuser. But either way, you lost somebody that could have possibly swept in through that, uh, through the balcony exactly where Terst is right now, leaving the Monty all on his own. Joystick is not close enough to be able to help. Bleed just picked them off one Ten by one. Remaining. Excellent defense from Bleed. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, that first pick Five probably remaining. paid dividends for him. Yeah, certainly. I think there's also a big amount of respect shown from both teams towards each other in that opening round. You bring the Monty, makes it a bit more comfortable when you want to push in. Means you respect Bleed. You know they're going to get aggressive, get in your face. The Montaigne can then help you get entry onto a map that can sometimes be a little bit difficult to gain said entry. And for Bleed as well, when they all kind of fell back to the side, it was like, okay, VP is starting to get a bit of map control. Let's just all move back. Let's just take that fight back towards site rather than trying to get over aggressive. So decent start here. The other thing for Bleed, how often have we seen them at a major international event be able to play a best of three in a stress-free environment? They don't have a threat of elimination and they're not playing in an arena or they're not playing in a major playoff game. It's a BO3 against a really good team, some stakes up for grabs, but it's not a do or die. I will say though, as action breaks out, you see some damage already being done to Pasha. You know this team quite well. Bleed strikes me as a team that thrives under pressure. They like to play that spoiler. Yeah, and true. as they get under the skin of these teams, they seem to only improve. So maybe they have a bit of a regression if there's no real stakes and don't have that same motivating factor that they had against quote unquote better opponents in more quote unquote important. Yeah, it's a really good way to frame it as well. Have to wait and see. But so far, they've got themselves again into those kind of aggressive positions. Two rounds in a row. This time, Ashby doesn't find a kill, but he does go for a little peek, a little bit of information gathered. They're on the rappel. He didn't quite catch them in terms of timing. And the time now is 90 seconds left in this round, second round. VP struggling to probably find that early content. They really want to try and get a few kills onto play. We've seen Aspie be able to survive a bit. They've got also still quite a lot of utility remaining in terms of impact and areas and nitrous cells. They droned really early for Virtus Pro, and then after that, they lost a whole whack of their drones. Obviously, it's soulless on the board, so it's going to be particularly tricky for them to survive. But since then, Virtus Pro has just been doing things on their own. Again, very isolated, very solo play, and it's their undoing at the moment. Pasha and Dan taken out by engagements that they had a semblance of where those players were, but ultimately couldn't do much. And it's only going to worsen as we get deeper into the round, and they're deprived of that information. Reap's taking the fight to always. Now there's only two from VP remaining with just a tiny bit of that clock left. The bomb Joystick all alone. Because there's a trade lead, and now Joystick. That's the kind of twist in the wind here, Jake. Yeah, certainly. Really well executed defensively from Bleed over towards Mezzanine and Drums. It's a pretty standard map-wide take from VP to come across from around that Geisha balcony side, make entry, and then eventually go towards site. But clearly well defended from Bleed, all those choke points. And that's probably the biggest highlight of a map like Skyscraper where it comes to these real important choke points. For VP, they probably could have gone for a little bit more of a direct sight hit. We've seen a lot of teams do that so far, this six Invitational. But uh, I think for Bleed, really just kind of reading into the fact that they left certain things open on site, understanding full well that VP were very much going for this side across. Hoven with a nice early kill there, sets the tone, sets the pace. And I think that's been the difference so far. Bleed just look very comfortable on defense. They're happy to swing. They're happy to go for spawn picks. They're happy to take the fights in the contact. And for Virtus Pro right now, it's just a matter of, do they have to think about how they one who really takes guys ah, maybe they should go a little bit more direct i mean maybe they should do it together that's the bigger thing again it was another round of individualism and if you want to play on your own that's fine there are lots of teams that can make it work but what we have witnessed over the last say two or three major events teams that play together and trade out really effectively yep. typically do Five better and if virtus pro isn't doing that then there's going to be a problem now this Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and well, your good friend Troy, Canadian, actually, we got to hear in the last match from yes. Dark Zero in that one of the timeouts they called was, hey, 
We just need to play more together. Let's play as a team. Let's everyone play their role, but we need to do it together because they had a couple of players at times, maybe not quite all on the same page. And I think for Virtus Pro, they're certainly a team that's shown throughout this tournament that they've been a little bit up and down at times. They've not always been this super high end team. 2-1 over W7M, that's great, but they also lost 1-2 to Team Liquid. So at times Virtus Pro probably can't quite reach the super heights of like a G2 in terms of consistency, but their best is as good as anyone else at this tournament. We talked about how, depending on the results of this particular map, or matchup rather, VP could go anywhere from first to four. Exactly. This, unlike a lot of the other groups we have, is very up for grabs. The other groups, you tend to see one or two teams topping the group, and then everybody else kind of fighting down below for survival, etc. Here, it's a group of equals, frankly, and it's been quite an unpredictable set of matches, just as this round has been quite unpredictable. One minute in, Reaps is dead, as is Joyce. Yeah, and I just wonder for Aspie if he's been given a bit of a, a license to roam a little bit. And he goes down here, Pasha catching him on the buck. That's much better from Virtus Pro. It does kind of seem like they're hunting a little bit better in this third round, so they get a couple of trades. Reaps hasn't had that super mega involvement, but it's Aspie that feels like, to me, at least on the defense so far for Bleed, where it's like he's gone for these spawn picks. He can play the cap cam, set those EDDs, and then he can go off and do his thing. So far, it's working. He's got the Four kills, but it does now mean site is a little bit more vulnerable as oh. they are losing players to Virtus Pro, who are just taking their time, playing a little bit more on the balcony, and trying to pick off these members of Bleed. Quite surprising that Bleed has only two players left on site, which is the downstairs kitchen site, kitchen barbecue. And Virtus Pro has barely made it in the building. I think that's quite a stunner here. And they're still droning out Geisha. One minute to go. You're still droning Geisha. Why? I think a big part of it, again, comes down to information. VP have done a much better job of managing their yep. drones. They're actively working to drone themselves in this time. Reach. Always was hoping for a draw out onto the Solus, who they still have on Reed. <laughs> oh, my. It's interesting you mentioned that as well, into the Mute and the Solus. They've only lost four drones, and the droning has been no! successful. Turto pushed in, trade immediately from Pasha, keeps the numbers with Virtus Pro still with time. Down to Mentalus. We already saw what he could do in the opening round on Team Room Karaoke, though, getting a double kill on site. He'll need to go one better, though, if Bleed are to win this round. But for Virtus Pro, so far, the job has been done. Now well, it's all about the final execution. Tatters. Yeah, I mean, Mentalus can pull off and unbelievable clutch here and there's capkin trap still to give him a leg up as pasha has just found out but this hatch drop is going to come in and mentalist needs to deal with them but he misses out on a multitude of players who drop now with the super shorty in hand he's just going to be simply outraged he's inside a pantry he can't go anywhere whatsoever impacts to go out but they're fruitless and he shot through the wall i want to say excellent patience from turdsta and more importantly really good strategy there Dan had Turdsta upstairs in karaoke, or in tea rather, playing by that gold door on drone for about 45 seconds. And we were trying to figure out, or at least maybe you were, I, I know I was for sure, trying to figure out why isn't Turdsta swinging? Surely he knows somebody is there in Dragon, so why not swing it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because there was one of Fenrir's gadgets, not too far removed. And the moment that the push-up happens, that's really sloppy right there from Aspie, by the way. The moment that happens, Turtz that can capitalize off of that information right there because he gets obscured and nearsighted. So the question is, why is he not pushing? Because you have gadgetry to do half the job for you. Why take a dry engagement 50-50 when you've got something that can help you? Well played by Bleed, good structure, but then you see that Aspie kill was really sloppy. Yeah. You see that the kill as well under the Valkyrie above on cams, really sloppy after the Maverick had opened up the wall. These are kind of rookie mistakes. Like you shouldn't really be in these positions. The leader still a relatively inexperienced team, all things considered. They're going to make those mistakes. And you can't be quite harsh on them when they do make it compared to some of the other teams like if say VP or Liquid is to make that kind of mistake. Yeah, and for VP in, in the flip in terms of that round as well, their drone game clearly improved quite extensively. They were able to also use a lot more of that balcony presence rather than just trying to rush into the map but we saw in the first couple of rounds, which probably went into the hands of Bleed. So for VP, just slowed it down a little bit. They're not really a team that has like the most ultra fast paced play style that we saw maybe in that G2 game earlier this afternoon. A minute and 23, typically their time on entry. So uh, on the lower end of the spectrum, certainly in a map like Skyscraper, that might actually pay dividends for them later on. Aspie's gonna move around that night. We're to get it back. Yeah, to get it back. Struggling? 
And though, luckily, his teammate gets a kill elsewhere on to Basher, and that's the buck as well. Roman likes roaming on this warden. We were, I don't want to say critical, but we cast a little bit of judgment on how early the warden died a couple of rounds ago when he needed in the cut and thrust of that round. Reeps goes for the run out on the terrace on a balcony and actually could have picked off Dan if he was about a second sooner. Aspie was unable to retrieve the nitro cell and will now be dead, so he won't be able to use it anyway, even if he'd gotten it, as he's picked off. Virtus Pro with just a little bit over half of the round to go. Have to be I think that just is the play style of Bleed, though. The aggression meta for them is, is very paramount, and it's kind of a matter of if the enemy's in front of you, you'll take that fight. You're not going to be too worried about the operator that you are playing. BP, though, again, two rounds in a row, playing this balcony play style. Joysticks now only just pushed in over towards Office and making their way across. Still got to deal with Reaps, though, inside of the server. Dan also goes just from drones now also to the Argus launcher as well to obviously get even more information. And it's just this pick apart play style that we're seeing for the second round in a row. Well, it obviously benefits Virtus Pro. Reaps once more, so he goes for another jump out, but alas, unable to handle the recoil of the SMG 11. Dan had an opportunity to not secure the kill, could have faded it out, but instead does not opt for that. Diffuser goes down, and is now Mentalist again against the world. He was so successful all the way back in round number one, holding gold, that's because the rest of his team was able to do their job around the map. Mentalist with one kill. It took him about 15 seconds. Not only does he have to deal with the Diffuser, but he also has to deal with the Osa, who's perched up on the window, and Shepard is sitting quite pretty behind that Talon shield. I don't know if Mentalist is going to be able to deal with this, but it's virtually an impossible fight. Even if he gets Shepard, you've only got about four seconds left to get in, and always, and always makes it official. Calmness and ice in the veins of Dan a little bit more animated as VP have now tied things up. So four rounds in, first two rounds bleed had the ascendancy. They were setting the tone. I thought they were very aggressive. They were kind of denying Virtus Pro a lot of map control. They were really at those entry points, as you can do on Skyscraper. The next two rounds, though, in response from Virtus Pro is let's slow it down a little bit. Let's get a little bit more information through our drone game. Let's play the balconies. Let's play the repels because we know Bleed like to move around. We know that Bleed like to try and go around the map. They're going to be moving. They're not quite going to be stacking it. In that moment, there from Reaps, he wins that. It's a two on three. Suddenly, the round is back. That's a desperate play, mainly because of what happened earlier in the round. I don't actually hate that play. In fact, I think that's a, a power play for Reeves. He hits that, rounds back on. He loses while they were probably losing the round anyway. But for Virtus Pro, clearly turning things around. And I think we've really got ourselves a series early on. I'm going super early, Parker. I don't care. I think I've seen enough bleed. If they can get their game going, they can clearly win. Virtus Pro, if they get the game on their terms, they can clearly win. Now it's just about this power struggle. 10 seconds remaining. If you are just tuning into your very Five first match here in the Six Invitation, welcome aboard. The defense are very strong. Are Defenders are by far and away favored on every single map. There isn't a single map at the moment which is attacker favored. The lowest win rate for the defenders is 55%. It's shared across a couple of different maps. Mm. Looking specifically at Skyscraper, really? Skyscraper has... <laughs> it's is, not good. This is unbelievable. It is the most defender-sided map. At the start of the day, it had been played seven times. The defenders had won 71% of all rounds played on this map. That is unbelievable. Karyogi and T played the most by the defenders 35 times, only one time more than off this side. T Karyogi, 66% of all rounds won by the defenders. Office exhibition, 76%. So if you play four times on office exhibition, you expect the defenders to win three of those four times based on precedent. Now, you go all the way back to round number two, Bleed won this bomb site. They've already won it once. But they dropped Barbecue Kitchen, which also defender favor. They dropped that karaoke tea, also defender favor. So numbers don't exactly always tell the full story here. It comes down to strategy, and BP have been getting better at understanding strategy as they've gone along on attack. Yeah, stats don't always tell the full picture, but certainly one moment here for VP is that two early attacking rounds gives them real good precedent now moving forward. They probably don't need much more. In saying that, I already cast a game of tournament where going into it, Consulate was the most attacker-sided map, and by the end of it, it ended up middle of the pack. It dropped a whopping 8%. Why? Because we had 12 defensive 
round wins. Yeah. Things can change, and I think Bleed are more than capable on the attack, but certainly the next two rounds are pivotal for them. They cannot allow VP to probably get any more attacking rounds, otherwise it's going to be quite difficult. Pasha with the Skeleton Key thought maybe he could go for a bit of a rush here through the doorway. They have Main Bridge opened up. Joystick watching this. A little bit more directness from VP as well. Not just this round, but also probably the last round when we saw that awesome play over towards Tea Room Karaoke. This time around, here towards Office and Exhibition, they go direct again. Last time they went for the map sweep, it did not work. Played into the hands of Bleed. So again, VP have switched it up on the fly, but a nice shot from Hovind against the slow crouch moving Asher. Now they go for the smokes and they go for the entry. And I was just about to be critical of Hovind's play as well, because if you're a Solus, you should realistically be below this office bomb site. But he picks up two kills from this position. Dan falls to Reaps. Reaps picks up yet another. Shepard getting rid of Hovind, which means that this portion of the bomb site is safe. But you got three more players to find. Shepard luckily having the diffuser, but no chance of him getting it down. It's gonna come down to bludge and bleed, as their name suggests, loves to do that to their opponents. So Shepard will waste a lot of time, waste a lot of bullets, and ultimately accomplish nothing. Three kills from Reaps, two kills from Hubbard. So here's the situation. Why are you not putting Solus underneath the bomb site? Now you got a couple early picks. You can play pretty much anybody else inside of that office portion of the map. It doesn't need to be a Solus. You keep the Solus there to give you information as to when that wall is being opened up. And we saw that on the scanner earlier, was able to tell when Hard Breach was going down on the walls, but you can still accomplish that below. So why are you putting yourself in harm's way? You as an operator are simply far too valuable when it comes down to a plant, and especially in the post plant, to basically gamble on a kill. Now. Hovind's a great player, and he got two kills from that position, so you can kind of overlook it. But strategy-wise, I can still dislike something, even if it ultimately ends yeah. up being successful. Virtus Pro got bogged down. They lost their duels. They had one smoke that they used outside of that. They had no real tools to get through that breach, and it was their own game. I do wonder, maybe from Bleed's perspective, if they felt like Virtus Pro were going to hit direct, but also fast, and therefore the extra body up above could be a difference could maker. Be. So it's really difficult to probably ascertain as to the reasoning, but you are definitely correct. The Solus is one that probably doesn't want to be on that front line of conflict. Uh, VP, one more opportunity to try and get third round successfully done. They go to T-Room Karaoke once again here, Bleed. They did give it up last time, and it was that more direct approach from Virtus Pro that saw them be quite successful. We'll see if they play into that again. They do bring double hard breach here for T-Room Karaoke, so we'll see how they opt to utilize that, especially the Maverick from Dan, but otherwise they got the Flores, they got the Bark, they can open up sight lines and, and crossfires and all of that. We love to see them over towards typically Gage your Balcony, but for now, right now, it looks as if they're going to open up Office and then into VIP as well, which is where the drone is from Shepard. So this is indicating right now they are going to be pushing from the Office exhibition side of things, eventually then into that choke point, but they can still go over towards Geisha as well. Hoven right now is roaming over by Dragon, so removed from the actual bomb site, but not too far off. Turdsta as well was looking towards Terrace on Drum, and will now move over closer towards Hoven. I find this really interesting that you've got two incredibly important operators in both the Solus and the Warden being played by, I, I think you could argue, two of the better players on Bleed. Turtz obviously has looked like, in my opinion, I think Turtz has been the most valuable player on the team. I think some could argue Reaps, that's fine. But to put these players who like to be engaged in early altercations on operators that you don't necessarily want to gamble in early altercations is certainly a choice. And again, it goes back to what we said earlier. Maybe Bleed are approaching this matchup thinking there's limited stakes. So let's try some things out and see. Maybe save some strats. Or they could do the opposite. Let's change things up and try to get under the skin of VP because we know how important it is for them. Whereas if we lose, not all hope is lost. It's whatever, we move on, we made it to playoffs. The two words I dread hearing is saving strats, Parker. We're at six oh, invitational even... time to use know. said strats. Otherwise, you know, maybe M80 have been saving strats all along. Had to use them. 50 seconds left, five versus five. Flash there from Basha. Again, a lot of Geisha balcony control established for VP, but this time it's Hoven again and on the Solus. The operator does not matter to these guys for bleed. Doesn't matter if it's water, doesn't matter if it's the Solus, they will get into the conflict whether you like it or not. Hasby does go down 3v3, 30 seconds left, but the longer this goes on, in terms of this scrap, it's Let's gonna favor out. bleed. 
Yeah, and I mean, if you look at the utility on the side of Virtus Pro, they really don't have much. They have a single flashbang left in the hands of Pasha, two flashbangs for Shepard. That's it. Always will now drop. No EE1Ds remaining either. You've taken control of Geisha, but now you need to pivot towards the actual T and karaoke Second part of this map. So if Shepard wants to get that diffuser down, Pasha and always need to watch it. They've used yeah, another flashbang. There's only one left. This is going to come down to straight gunfights, but obviously it's going to benefit these defenders. Turks is quarterbacking the defense inside of this T site. He takes down Pasha too. And then ultimately, not everybody dies. VP still has one player left, but it doesn't matter because the time runs out. And the first half. He chose this map. Bleeds seem very comfortable on it. They take four of the six rounds on defense, which again matches what we expect from the numbers. It does. Based on this map, based on where we're at in the middle. Systematically loved that though from Bleed because they had multiple layers, almost like an onion, where you've got that front line, mid line, and then the back line of Mentalist. He might not have the highest amount of kill stats, but he's on site, he's defensive, he's your anchor. Turd was then able to peek these options. And then if he dies, there's the swing immediately. You can see behind the bomb chassis, the name tag of Mentalist. If Turd still loses that battle, he's immediately swinging and getting the trade anyway. While positioned on site, as I said, it's almost like these layers across there from Geisha all the way to Tiram Karaoke. 4-2, statistically, par. That's a par. Yep. It's not a win. No one's really probably winning right now. But it does mean for Blade coming into the attack, I am going to be very, very interested to see how this works. 38% attack win rate for them, much lower than Virtus Pro. So remaining. this is where they need to improve. The other factor is planting, Parker. 11%, second lowest at the tournament. They don't get many plants. But Bleed basically just go in and kill everyone. Yeah. And I mean, I think it kind of ties back to that office exhibition defense that we saw as well. I was critical of the deployment of these operators, as you just were in the previous round, about how they're using the Solus and how they're using the Warden. Well, if you're a team that is so proficient at getting kills and strategy doesn't really matter, then ultimately, who cares? You don't need to plant the Diffuser if there's nobody alive to deal with on your opponent's side. And Unfortunately, I find that a lot of APAC teams tend to fall into this rut where they're excellent at gunplay, but strategy-wise, there's tons of room for improvement. And I think Bleed felt that as well. So what do you do? You import a world champion in Julio who's not going to teach you how to shoot, but he's going to teach you how to play. Here we go, a little fast action here. Reaps up through into makeup on the Amaro. And Woo! Catch off guard always. He wanted to peek, have a look at what was going on in terms of the commotion. And again, this goes with what we've been saying. Fast gunplay, get the kills. Don't worry too much about the plant. That's a secondary win condition if we need it later on. Two minutes in, 4v3, but they've already got pressure in towards site. My concern though is now Reeves. Yes, he's deep into Geisha, but where's the trade positions going to come from if he does start to get overpowered? I like that you talked about Mentalist too. He's obviously playing one of these global ops on the Dokabi. Mentalist has probably, I would say, the highest impact kills of anybody on Bleed. He gets the kills that matter the most. Now, another pick goes on in. Oh no, he can't get away. Shepard has the read on it. Reaps is able to reposition. They've got control of main stairs as well. Dan's inside of the site. Aspie and Turds are in here. That was dreadfully bad for Virtus Pro. Now, they had the information there onto Reaps. They go down below. They obviously want to not just clear out his position. They want to kill him at that point, and they certainly needed to. He had already got very deep into Geisha, fast movement. Love the set play, though, from Bleed. They clearly had a bit of a plan. Probably give the credit to Julia. I'm going to, whether or not it's true. But regardless, they obviously were able to set that in motion, executed it perfectly. I was still a little concerned for Reaps, but Reaps worked that well. He didn't overstep. He didn't rush and run away. He just kind of held his position until the threat came. Then the threat came from down below. Then he was able to move off of that and Bleed were able to respond. So I think for VP, they probably anticipated probably that normal map-wide sweep across because they had a lot of those trade coins of like drum and mezzanine, what we typically see when teams like to push from office and exhibition or maybe like a Geisha balcony. But Bleed did something a little bit different with that little vert play up into the hatch and in towards Geisha from makeup. So really well executed from Bleed, catches VP off guard and it gets them a nice early attacking round. Now it puts them in a really good position moving forward in the second half. Actually, a little surprised Virtus Pro didn't call a timeout there because if you go on a 4 2 half, that's fine. Let's just, for the sake of argument, suggest that attackers are only going to win two rounds. Well, Bleed is already one for one on attack. That means the statistical likelihood of Bleed winning another round beyond just those two is very high at the moment because you've exposed some weaknesses from Virtus Pro. I, I, don't, I don't know if VP have enough confidence in themselves to just kind of grin and bear it through the next one or two rounds. But at the end of the day, 
Mm. You don't call a timeout right now. Mm. VP lose this round. Even if those are the only two rounds that you think Bleed might win, you have to play the rest of this regulation perfectly. And then you burn the timeout. You have no room for error whatsoever. If I was VP, probably call the timeout after that round. But they didn't. They'll trudge through it. They brought some very interesting tools, some very frustrating ops to deal with, and it's incumbent upon Bleed to deal with those. Depends on the team's mentality as well. If Virtus Pro, again, not really feeling that stress, that pressure, how much value do you put into first, second, third, in terms of the group positioning? Hard to say. We're not privy to that information. Obviously, you always want to finish as high as you possibly can, and you get the benefit of going straight to the quarterfinals if you do finish first. They get themselves an opportunity, though, once again, to defend Kieran Karaoke. And I can imagine by the setup that they've got, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Bleed to push in quick. The Fenrir with the f not mines, the Legion with the Goo mines. They can't get as much information because of the Mute Chairmans. But regardless, Hoven just Attackers keeps finding kills. I don't know how, Parker, but he's up to eight now. So, an interesting statistic here. VP has yet to draw first blood all match. It has either been Bleed or a trade every single round. You cannot win a game if you are consistently in a 4v5, especially if you are in a 4v5 on the favorable side. Bleed drawing first blood on both of their attacks so far means that you are losing the plot on what should be the best side that you have possible. Dan down means no magnets, means that that operator who generates it won't be able to provide the same level of value. He's also a great gun. Virtus Pro are in serious trouble with a minute to go. The kit has been handed over, almost like in American football, for from the quarterback to the wide receiver, which is the Montang now. Picked up beautifully by Asfi. They'll open up that rotate in. He can go and get the plant down eventually. 50 seconds, so still time as Asfi makes his way in. He just has to do so successfully. The turnaround, little turtle style shield on the back means he cannot be denied unless there's a nitrous cell or a couple of Attack impacts, exactly. neither of which come through. Plant is now successful. That can be watched from Blackstairs, although, of course, you've got the shield that's sitting in front of it. No, and now in the post plan, you've lost Shepard, Joystick is still up, so is Pasha. There's a lot of threats here for Virtus Pro, but there's a Monty on the board. That's the bigger deal, right? Pasha is now all alone. I don't know if he has time to pick Shepard up. I don't think so. So what do you do? You ascend those back stairs, but you have to deal with a Monty, and there's going to be three sets of guns looking ooh, ooh. your way. Oh, my. That's sloppiness from Aspie, but that's only because they don't know where Pasha is. Time's running out. Final two kills come in from Bleed, and oh my my, it's already map point. We're speed running Skyscraper, Bleed is up 6-2. Yeah, really good set play again with the Montang from Bleed, really abusing that Blackstairs position, which was not really defended all that vigorously by Virtus Pro. Again, Virtus Pro, and they were almost like behind the eight ball. The round prior to that, Bleed went fast. They went in with the Amaro. What do they then bring to try and counter a little bit more of that fast paced gameplay? They bring the Fenrir, they bring the Gleesion, they want to kind of slow Bleed down. Bleed are like, we will then slow down, but we're going to do it over here and we're going to do it our way. We're going to bring in the Montang, we're going to get that plant down. You're not going to be able to stop it because you're more worried about stopping us over towards again drum mezzanine etc really well played and so far it feels almost like a coach v coach game because i tell you what julio has got them on form in this match they've clearly workshopped their skyscraper they've clearly got plans that they wanted to bring and this is why in terms of statistics it doesn't always tell the full story because right now bleed are not playing the way that maybe teams have so far conventionally done on Skyscraper. They've got set plays. They are playing extraordinarily well. That was off of a drone, developing information. Really, really well done from Bleed. And so far, they are proving why they're a team that can certainly do some damage at this event. Unfortunately, they cannot top this group because they did drop a map yesterday to M80, which was an, a desperate no! M80, obviously trying to fight for their survival. But right now, are very much showing they are a force to be reckoned with. A lot of ink has been spilt about that M80 roster, and I mean, for good reason. This was a super team that was assembled with players from Brazil, or Brazilian players, rather, I the specification here should be. Brazilian players, North American players, and European players. The term super team is thrown around, I think, maybe a bit too much in Rainbow Six, because just because you're importing players from another region doesn't necessarily mean it's a super team. It can just be an international team. But the expectations for M80 were enormous. Not only their own expectations and their org's expectations, but also the expectations of their fans and ours. You know, there's a lot of chatter online about how much they're paid and, you know, all the, all the practice they have and how they boot camped for well over a week before they actually started their first match. And ultimately, it was all for naught. And to see teams like Bleed, who 
Yeah, they made a terrific run in Atlanta, but very easily could have been a flash in the pan, as, you know, Los could be argued there a flash in the pan after finishing second in Atlanta. The fact that M80 had some struggles there was fascinating. And maybe the narrative shouldn't necessarily be about how M80 underperformed, but how Bleed has been performing properly, because now we are seeing Bleed come into their own. They did well in Atlanta, they're doing well here, and the language that we use to describe this Bleed roster is slowly changing the more game reps they have yeah. in. And I'm glad you said properly, because it's not like some might have said overperforming. I don't think it's been an overperformance so far. All of their matches have gone to three, so they're not overperforming in the sense that they're beating these juggernaut teams 2-0. They're just at that kind of level where they certainly can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and they're doing that again against VP. Joystick and VP clearly trying to maybe get a little bit more early contact in these rounds, because right now, when you think about the last two rounds, Bleed have been able to get all of these opening kills, like you said. So for Virtus Pro, it's kind of like, maybe we should get a little bit more aggressive. Maybe we should get in their face, make it more difficult to get map control. But they fall back with 90 seconds to go. They got a lot of dragon control, but that's about it. To translate that to over towards office, Joystick is looking like a shell of himself in this matchup, sitting on two and eight. And it's not like we want to be critical of somebody's performance or lack thereof of performance, but when Joystick who is supposed to be one of the main points of contact. He plays dangerous minutes. He plays Attackers up front on defense. Users. He plays up front on attack. You need him to get kills, whether he's supported or not. Now, obviously, when Virtus Pro was on attack, the argument that I put forward was that, yeah, they were playing like individuals and they weren't joining each other in. Joystick usually can excel in that environment, but now he's running headfirst into this wall and he's not having any success whatsoever. If Joystick can't figure things out, that doesn't, bode, that doesn't bode well for Virtus Pro here or in the next map. Yeah, Zoto canister was thrown. It was then shot out, and then the wall then opens up. But Oven was standing behind it. Gives Virtus Pro an opportunity. Well taken. And he does remain down, but he should be able to get to a position where safety for the revive, but only 30 seconds left. And so there's more pressing matters here at the moment. No, and I mean, again, Virtus Pro hasn't got on the board first until this round. Finally, VP are able to get an uncontested first blood. They got the down on the Hoven, so now it's up to Mentalist and Reaps to either pick him up or 15 seconds left to fight their way through it. But they're unfortunately doubled up by Virtus Pro, who are going to continue all the killing and are incredibly disciplined. VP are not hunting for this final kill. They're allowing Mentalist to toil and waste time, and they get the picks. After they call the timeout, they immediately translate that into a round victory, and it's one so desperately needed for this European team. I thought they played that really well, Virtus Pro. So a lot of that drag and control made it difficult to push into that area of the map. They kind of gave Bleed a lot of that uh, office area side, especially if they wanted to open up that main breach. Yes, they still have the Zota canisters. The beauty of it is you can throw it from a distance back all the way over, like two bloody rooms over. And they were able to delay that, not for long, it eventually got opened up. But more importantly, they had those sight lines from Dragon side, from Exhibition side, in towards Alpha. So it's sort of like funneling Bleed in, and Bleed kind of just had to go that way because they didn't really have the time to take those battles towards Dragon. So really nicely done from Virtus Pro in the defense. And again, shows what they can do when they are able to control the round a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the more game reps you get, the better. I'm sure as you are from not necessarily this region, because I know the region is fractured. It's not just APAC anymore. It's all the different sub-regions. But one of the main complaints from Ten Korean teams, remaining. Japanese teams, I've heard it a lot from Australian teams, is scrim quality. Yeah. If you are playing geographically isolated from other regions, the only real time you can get good quality scrims are at international events. Yep. The fact that there are APAC teams with one could argue some of the worst scrim quality of any regions in all of Rainbow Six competing as well as they are is remarkable. And it really is a testament to these individual player skills. Bleed is not just getting good scrim quality, they're getting in these game day reps. They have a hard group. Even with M80 imploding, mm -hmm. this was still a highly vaunted team. You've also got Liquid, who historically, excellent team. You've got W7M, back-to-back -back defending major champions. You've got Virtus Pro, a team who can easily make it to the finals and has done so over the last couple of years. So the fact that Bleed is keeping pace with them and outright beating some of them is excellent. This Bleed team is only going to continue to improve, especially with Julio at the helm as coach now. So the more rounds you get against Virtus Pro, the more you're going to learn win or lose. Bleed, keeping their mental up, they look happy. And so far, they're very much in the driver's seat. Virtus Pro needs to win the next three rounds in a row, or we move on to map number two, Bleed Up 1-0.
Bricks, his kitchen and barbecue, by the way, but the Montang has been brought back regardless anyway from Blid. Asha gets an opening kill two rounds in a row, but the trade more. does come through. Guess what? Montang does indeed have a <laughs> gun. It is a pistol, and it is very much lethal. If not, mine's obviously going off, but... Minute 40, four versus four, but a little bit of that vert control being established for Blade. You see all the gadgetry that was up there at that door as well. The Monty was sitting there, two ADSs, those, those dread mines as you talked about, the proximity alarms. There's so much investment from Virtus Pro just for a single doorway and it doesn't even pay off. Now, you've taken turrets down, which is huge. He's an offensive threat. The Brava is down. And Virtus Pro can sit pretty for the time being. They've still got control over the bomb site, but they need to worry about the Monty as he moves towards Joystick, who seems to be alone inside of Geisha. Don't have the best utility for the Montang either. No Nitro Cells left, no impacts. So they are going to have to deal with him front on. Hoven has picked up that diffuser. They were obviously on that Geisha balcony for some time, wanting to get in control. Castle Barricades made it a little bit annoying. Hoven, again, another kill. Goes to double digit kills. Now, even still with that diffuser, that's a big moment there. He dies, that's kicked down in an unlikely position to be salvaged. 40 seconds left. Aspie inside a Geisha. No. Oh, oh my back. goodness, Shepard is just caught napping. You knew he was up. I'm losing my mind. I'm absolutely losing my mind. How does that even happen? Is controller disconnected? I'm not sure. Joystick gets the pick, immediately traded back. It's all up to Pasha. That is just such a baffling altercation, Jake. I do not get it at all. And you're going to continue to have Aspie here. Hang on. But great kill by Pasha. No way! Excuse me! He puts the shield away, pulls out the pistol, and in the most unlikely of scenarios, it's Aspie to propel his team to second map up one nothing. What an incredibly lethal Montang. Like two kills with the pistol that round, one on the entry up above, one to clutch it in the end from Aspie. Hoffman's the MVP, but Aspie then in the clutch. Good things from Reeves and Turd. Mental is strong on site. It's a five-man roster that can do it all, Parker. Yeah, I mean, a really stunning end to that round and one where I am so perplexed by how everything happened. But that's it for map number one. We've got plenty more in our final matchup of the day. Sit tight. We'll be right back.
lead continued to impress in Sao Paulo. They have just taken down Virtus Pro on Skyscraper. Granted, their own map pick, they've still done it 7-3. That is a pretty dominant scoreline from a team that we were still unsure whether it was a fluke, whether they were fraudsters. Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted this to be a three-game series. I think we're set up for that now. There was maybe some danger VP with 2-0, but lead pulling through a really strong skyscraper. I liked their defenses to start things off. They were getting mobile. They didn't want to, or they were able to adapt to multiple different styles of pushes. And then their attacks, really, really clean. It's been hammered to death, but this is a very defender side of map. And yet for Bleed to win so many attacks time after time, force that attack time off in Virtus Pro, it only was good for one enough, uh, for one round. And uh, yeah, Bleed taking a clean 7-3. I think VP looked quite flat today, mm. which is kind of in contrast to the VP that we've been seeing lately, where they have been a little bit more energetic. They have been winning those gunfights. It's not really too usual that we're saying VP needs to start winning more gunfights, but that was one of the big big things that stood out to me at least today. And it just seemed as though Bleed, they, they've really found their form. You said that they're looking very good on their attack. How much do you think Julio might have something to do with this? I think it's got to be huge, right? I mean, Julio being coming in through the coach for Bleed um, obviously has, it uh, doesn't play in the same region as Virtus Pro, but has been playing against the core of this roster at international events for a very long time now. And I think um, being able to to work in a map like this, I'm sure has helped. I will say Skyscrip is a map that uh, Bleed have played a bit in the past. So it's not like they were brand new and he was creating all these strats for him. But I do think that it's, uh, it's had a big impact. And uh, certainly, I mean, the players showed up today. Hoven on the opening pick was one that really stood out to me as well. Yeah. Plus five on that entry. Mm -hmm. um, that's insane. That's insane. You know, especially when you look at a couple of players on the side of VP, you look at Joystick, you look at Dan, players that you may be expecting to get in around that conversation. They were like negative three, negative two. So he's yep. really doing a lot of work there to battle that. Uh, Bleed certainly coming out dominant in that opening pick stat line. But it, it was one of the ways that they approached the map as well. You could see from the start, you know, it, it wasn't looking terrible for Virtus Pro. Like they got a couple of rounds on their belt and you kind of look at this thinking, you know, have they got it within them to do it? But as the game wore down, it was it was all bleed. Yeah, I think that after the 4-2 split, you're looking at that from Virtus Pro and you're like, this isn't too bad. We're going to be okay. It's, it's doable, not, it's right? Not a problem. Yeah, easily, right? You move to V or you move to, uh, to defense on Skyscraper. Um, but then there were just so many little things that kept going wrong for them. I remember the very first attack that uh, Bleed ran out. You had Reaps going up the Geisha hatch and being a huge distraction. You got one big pick and then following that, every other player on Virtus Pro was just staring at him the whole round because he was such a nuisance. He was staying alive uh, and he did a really good job taking that attention away from Virtus Pro and his teammates then completely completely capitalized off that, uh, circling the bomb site and closing in and winning that round was really, really beautiful stuff. Well, one thing that we've kind of alluded to coming into this is the individuals on um, both teams. Mm -hmm. One individual uh, specifically toward the end, yeah. surprised. Yeah, I just talked about Reeves, but Asfi also had an insane round, the final one on the Monty. Uh, usually this is like a team operator, right? <laughs> usually this is an operator. You play with your teammates, you drone for them, you're like a living drone, you give them that intel, and then they get the kills. Asfi yeah. didn't seem to get that memo. What's crazy about these shots is they're all like so quick. Yeah. He's popping around the corner, boop, like a one tap. He's like coming up from behind the bar, boop, one tap. Like, I don't know what this guy's been uh, eating for breakfast, but clearly it's having a huge uh, huge impact on him because Asfi's a player that hasn't always been popping off for bleed. Today on the Monty of all operators, he's been crazy. I need a clip or a gif of you doing the boop and the one tap. Boop. <laughs> It's so true, though. One of the things that I sort of looked at moving into this game was that there were the top three performers on the side of Bleed were kind of keeping Asfi afloat because of how yeah. badly he was performing overall. He was like negative 20 or something like that over the course of the series, uh, over the course of the group stage, which is fine in one way if the team is backing it up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of slack for people to keep up and then perform themselves. So the fact that we saw him have a good day today on the Monty, it's great. Do you want to see your Monty D shielding? Not always. Ideally, if you're in ranking, your Monty's D shielding, get him off the Monty. But in this circumstance, it worked out great. Certainly did. And now they're going to have to carry this across to Bank. This is potentially. That, um, you know what? I'm not even going to say potential. Does it have the potential to be a 2 0, Jesse? It's going to be tough on Bank. Yeah. It's going to be tough to 2 0 VP. They love Bank. Again, most European teams ban this against them. Um, the second day of SI, they did get to play here uh, against M80. They beat them. It was a close match, to be fair. Um, but it is a map that Virtus.pro are very, very well prepared on. I'll say for Bleed, two, uh, four plays back in stage two with an even record. They also beat M80, funnily enough. I was going to bring games. that up uh, in Atlanta. But yes. however, it's M80. So does that hold <laughs> much weight? 
I don't know. I don't know how much weight that holds. Jeez, that's pretty tough. That's pretty tough. Well, uh, what's not tough is you don't have to wait any longer. We don't have to go taking stabs. We are going to go ahead and throw it across to your casters. Unfortunately, the gift of the gab has gone, but Bert and Ernie remain. <laughs> what? <laughs> which one is Bert? Which one is Ernie? I don't think I'm Bert. Wait, which, I which is the one? I don't even know right now. I can't even I, picture this. Yeah, I'm a little confused as to which one I would be. <laughs> Who's the tall one with the long nose? Because I mean, like, I don't think neither of us. I think we're about like the same height as well. We look relatively similar, just different shades. Like you're yeah. dark hair, green eyes, blue shirt. I'm dark eyes, but lighter hair and a pink shirt with two cans on it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Rob, for derailing this one. It's a very big and important game, and you try and throw in this joke. He's, He's been an agent of chaos. Agent of chaos. Even in the green room. Uh, he, well, hmm, green room probably is more Carter than anyone ever in the history. Well, of I mean, history. Carter is excellent at producing noise. <laughs> he is like a sound he is. machine. So one thing I want to touch on very quickly, bringing it back just a smith, before we get into bank, okay, is that, and I said it to you a little bit off air, as soon as we kind of threw back, what we saw just then from Bleed, back on Skyscraper, especially more so that second half, attacking-wise, might be systematically the best attacking siege I've seen from an APAC team mm -hmm. in a long, long oh, absolutely. time. It was calculated, it was coordinated, they all looked like they were on the same page, it looked like it was planned out, and they followed said plan. And so for me, I was just blown away and impressed by Bleed. I've watched these guys for quite some time now, of course, from APAC. I've seen them do some really good things, and I've seen them throw away good chances. Of course, I recall back to the LCQs for Copenhagen, in which they missed out after a 7-0 regular season. They have not put much of a foot wrong since. Again, undefeated in Stage 2, an impressive performance at Atlanta, and now here at Six Invitational, they are really becoming a team that is more than just an APAC team. They are an SI team. Absolutely. They're an... S-E-A-I-T, <laughs> if we want to go deep into that one. I really respect Virtus Pro banning the Monty, by the way. I like that a lot. They obviously assessed that through the three rounds that we saw, the three round victories, rather, that we saw on Skyscraper, that Monty can really get under their skin. Virtus Pro don't want to deal with the shield operator. Now, Skyscraper is a certain map where shield operators don't always work. Bank is a map that is very favorable to shield operators, especially Monty. There was a period of time back in like 2018 through 2020 where shield operators were so seldom Attackers used that the only real time you'd ever see a Monty would be on Bank. And of course, it was up to the teams that employed him. So you got a team like Bleed, who are excellent on shields. You get a map that is paired very well with shield operators, like a nice medium rare steak and a Cabernet Sauvignon, and suddenly you don't want to deal with the shield at all. Good call by Virtus Pro. And honestly, I mean, Virtus Pro has a history of losing the map, which is not theirs, and then doing well on the next two maps. Clubhouse is a great map for Virtus Pro historically. Bank is obviously one of their best maps historically. This could still very easily be a 2 1 for Virtus Pro, but it will take some serious work from them. Bleed looks spectacular on Skyscraper, and they're going to start on defense of Bank, which again, sounding like a broken record here, every single map is defender-sided. Bleed should be able to take four rounds. If they don't win four rounds on defense, that's when the worrying starts. Obviously, we have to get through at least four rounds first to see what's going to happen. Yeah, not as defender sided as Skyscraper was, but again, I'll bite. If you've got the uh, ability to break down the defense and set plays, then you can kind of throw all of those statistics out the window. Uh, but we are kind of looking to Virtus Pro now to bounce back. And I gotta say as well, back on Skyscraper, yes, there was a lot of mistakes. Yes, there were errors, but I also think you have to put it down to just the way in which Bleed played. They were systematically very impressive and they were also oppressive against Virtus Pro. It made it very difficult for them to get their game plan going. And I think it means it's very important for me to see VP start well to get these opening kills you touched on the back on skyscraper it's something they lacked they weren't able to win a lot of these early engagements and punish bleed and therefore made it difficult to then sort of overload certain site positions this is a good start early kill on turd who's playing the solus they've already got rid of a couple of drones but it now means they can drone site a little bit more effectively yeah, I mean, there's this is a big map. Bank is one of the biggest maps in the entire map pool. Obviously, we'd have to go to numbers to see, is it actually the biggest? It doesn't really matter for this argument. But for the sake of the argument, let's just say that it is one of the biggest maps, which it is. 
you have an operator like Valkyrie, you have an operator like Vigil, you have an operator like even Cavero, which does see some picks here on Bank, and Solus, they all share one thing in common, and it's that they are incredibly versatile at roaming. You can play them on all floors, on all bomb sites, and Bank usually necessitates a two-step period to drone out the entirety of this map. So Turdsta can shoot the drones, go unseen, and manage to rotate effectively while also being one of the best guns on Bleed, Solus is a great operator for him. Early first pick from Virtus Pro is humongous, and they can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that one of the operators that can get under their skin and fly under the radar is well. Hovind's one to watch in terms of Bleed, a very impressive player. Back on that last map of Skyscraper, playing mainstays on the Warden, but probably not the best flanking operator. You want him on site when those flashes do come through. There's a couple from Pasha on that line, so he can't probably go for said flank over towards the hatch, reaps in towards loading dock as well and always going for the default plan should get denied by the gas babes but it has missed the mark and that is an error on the side of bleed that should get punished now by virtus pro they have hatch control with that plan very difficult retake scenario now for bleed and immediately to double stack push up main stairs from reaps and hoven very well done watching that diffuser go down, by the way. EMP's thrown out to disable any gadgets from being tossed. Additionally, a nitro cell goes. It's shot away at by Virtus Pro, who are now holding on the stairs. So Hoven's gonna go up top and completely retake above. Pasha dies. It leaves Defenders just Shepard and Always the with the diffuser within reach of Bleed, but they are running out of time. And I don't really know what Hoven is trying to do at this point. He drops. Mentalist is on the diffuser. You gotta go. He peels off. Here's the money, and it's gone. Bleed will not be able to get the diffuser in time, whether it's shot away by Virtus Pro. Ultimately, the timer works against them, and VP starts off with quite a confident, and I would argue a statement round, as they take no prisoners on their entry. The main issue that I saw with Virtus Pro's attacks was they were not working together on Skyscraper. They were droning in, but then not following up immediately on the information. They were working as individuals, not as a team. They've already shown better teamwork on that very first round of Bank than I think you could argue they showed on most of those rounds on Skyscraper. And of course, it's their map. You expect this to happen. That is an unbelievable first kill. By now, uh, now, of course, big round from VP, but logically, it probably shouldn't have at least played out in that scenario at that time frame. Those gas babes should typically be able to deny a plant such as that, clearly missed from Mentalist, and he didn't have the visual information, nor do you really get it. And so unfortunately then for Bleed, it allowed that plant to go down. And as we typically see on lockers and CCTV, if that plant is successful on the server side push, most times, statistically, you will then not be able to get the retake unless you can win left. that battle up above. That battle up above was lost. Lost one on main stairs and then the hatch drop from Hovind, which I did not mind it because if you just go through beepers, it's probably being watched. He goes up into stock instead, wants to play the drop or at least he threw the, the floorboards to get some information. So Bleed, at least on the retake, did everything they needed to do, as we saw in the end, ran out of time. Time is precious. You and I tend to be uh, the oldest, some of the oldest talent here on the roster. Because, yeah. we're, you know, we're surrounded by youngsters. I'm sure as you get older, you realize how much more precious your time ultimately is. And it's a hard, that's a hard lesson to learn if you're bleed in round number one. It's only a single round, so... But again, let's go back to these numbers here on Bank. If you can win two rounds of your attack on pretty much every single map, you are in excellent position. Now, Skyscraper, at the time of us playing it, previously was the most defender side of map, and we spoke about that. Bank is middle of the pack in terms of its play rate. It's been played seven times, which is the same as Skyscraper, but it also ends up being one of the most defender favored as well. 63% of all rounds won by the defense, so you expect a 4-2 half for the defenders. Anything beyond that is abnormal. Locker CCTV, the downstairs bomb site, is won by the defenders a whopping 70% of the time. Well, Virtus Pro's already bucked that number by winning the very first round. That is an excellent sign for this team, and if they can keep that up and maybe win another round quickly, or even two in a row, VP are very well situated to carry on the second half of this match. In response, please go for a little bit more of a set play over towards CEO. Stock standard right now, Changing mentalist mics. inside of elevator, opening kill, but then traded immediately for a couple of moments. Again, two rounds in a row where Solus is off the board early for bleed. An operator that ideally needs to be impactful throughout the entirety of the round. At least though, drones have already been taken off the board as well. Only three now remaining for Virtus Pro, so they are heavily utilizing that to get as much information as possible. Top square push, but you do need to deal with Hoven eventually over towards 
that's got hallway. Not a whole lot of pressure, though, from BP. Instead, focusing on the repel. It seems like Turnstead is playing a much more sheltered role on this ward, which I like. We were skeptical of the deployment of Bleed's defensive operators with this skyscraper matchup. But you look at Virtus Pro's lineup, they are bringing Claymores and they are bringing Flashbangs galore. The Flashbangs in particular will be the bigger issue. And the longer a Warden stays alive, and the deeper the Warden plays away from the actual execute, the more value you're gonna get. The way that Turtz is playing right now, he's playing in that front office, staring all the way through both of the bomb sites. He's gonna have the great gun of the MPX in hand, and when the actual rubber hits the road in roughly 25 seconds, there's no operator better suited to stop this VP execute, especially with all the flashbangs they're going to use. 20 seconds. Still keep an eye on Hoven. This one's not over just yet. He's going to be the one to maybe unlock coming in from that stock hallway position, especially past Janitor. On the repel, though, being one. Shepard, good shot. Joystick as well. I mentioned Hoven. Unfortunately, a little too late to the party. Those on site as well, defensively for Bleed, losing their ones. There are power players for Virtus Pro hitting some really good shots, and they need to. They need to cover always once he gets in towards site. It really is like a protect the president moment there for Virtus Pro. It's a tough bomb site to roam on successfully, especially if there's lots of tools being brought to hunt down roamers. Now, if you look at the lineup from Virtus Pro for that particular matchup, they brought a lion, but outside of that, it was an ace, a Zofia, a Habana, and an Ash. You've got lots of destruction and honestly, an abundance of good guns. You put a lot of good guns in the hands of Virtus Pro and you have them drone themselves in successfully, good things happen. Another very cohesive round from Virtus Pro. But as we say that, there's the other side of the coin, where Bleed played that defense very safe. They didn't really hold Attackers the map control that they needed to. And it gave Virtus Pro ample time to drone things out and set up on square after they were able to pick off the player that had the Nitro Cell down playing on blue. Once you've done that, the remainder of Bleed is nestled in relatively safely around the bomb site. Virtus Pro can quickly assess that, get their ducks in a row, and begin to pressure square, which is exactly what happens. You don't have anybody from Bleed that can answer the repel play of Virtus Pro. You're far enough back, as I pointed out, by Banana for Turds, who ultimately, despite being on the Warden, was not particularly effective. And then the cross that Virtus Pro held on those windows was enough to shut down Aspie, who rushed up to try and stop the diffuser from being planted. All told, Virtus Pro read into the defense of Bleed, and then was able to make it work quite quickly. Virtus Pro have now won two attacks in a row on Bank, which is the magic number. In theory, they shouldn't win anymore, but I have a feeling they just might. That's a very strong feeling, apt because they've been quite dominant in these opening two rounds. They haven't necessarily been scrappy. Maybe those first, you could argue. Good information here from Shepard on the Kludge drone that is now shot out. Don't know how much he was really able to gain from it, but at least in terms of information, got something over towards staff in an open area. For VP, once again, it's uh, going to be over the same location. CEO on the repel, kind of similar to our last round because Bleed have extended up above and are playing in a pretty similar defensive location, except the fact they got some down in archives too. Last time out, I think they were maybe anticipating more of a spiral stairs push, maybe a bit of pressure front desk. It never came through. Kanto never got really opened up regardless for Versus Pro. They obviously had a set idea. Nice little yellow pink for Shepard. Doesn't want to lose that clutch drone. It's the last one and it's gone. There's going to be a minute 40 left. Nitrosol ripped bleed. One thing they did really well back on Skyscraper, they wanted these contact fights. They wanted to try and get in the face of VP. Right now, I think this is the kind of site where you can make that that happen. Love the IQ pick from Pasha as well. We've talked about how good the Commando is. It's pound for pound one of the best weapons in the game at the moment. It's brought by both Grim as well as the IQ. Grim has seen a massive increase in his pick rate. But when you're looking at a big, big map like this, you've got a Valkyrie on the board, you've got a Solus on the board, you've got a Fenrir on the board, and a Maestro. Four of those operators, their main gadget is going to be hunted down by IQ. You've got the secondary of Reaps as well, which is the camera. And Joystick's going to walk in as Slaughter Mentalist, who's playing a little bit detached from the actual bomb site, which is that open area. Hoven will be the next one who should be able to catch Dan here, but he lets him go by. That's an opportunity missed by Bleed. Certainly so. 45 seconds. Mentalus losing out on main stairs was never in a position to get trade by himself as Reaps was still over towards that elevated position. At least Reaps does, from said position, find a kill. Does mean from beepers they've got some control. Dan over towards E Box loses his life to Halfen. This archives control has proven to be quite strong for Bleed. They've created a little fortress. Shepard wants to get involved now as well towards Bot Square, but immediately now you've got to deal with Blue, you've got to deal with archives, you've got to deal with Sight. The drop down though is successful. 
always gets the kill on two reefs, opens up sight. In a one versus two now for Virtus Pro, all they have to deal with is Turdstar and they know where he is. Ten seconds left. You got Diffuser in hand, Jake. And unless Turdstar can swing onto this, the coverage from Joystick always trusting his teammate, and the trust is not misplaced at all. Three rounds in a row on attack, on bank for Virtus Pro. Absolutely destroying the statistics behind this map. One of the most defender-sided maps by numbers, sitting in the top three. VP have not just won three attacking rounds in a row, Jake. They have done so while getting first bloods in two of them, trading in one of them, getting the diffuser down in all three of them, and have confronted three different bomb sites in the process. Yep. It's not like Bleed is going to the same bomb site over and over, and Virtus Pro can just make small changes and ultimately win. There really isn't a lot of good things to say about Bleed through these three rounds so far, and it surprises me very little that Bleed burns their time out so soon. Yeah, I mean, right now, Virtus Pro looks really good, the bounce back. I mentioned it back on Skyscraper that you know, the irony in all of this is this is a team that can finish anywhere from first to fourth in this group, but it's also a team that can play really high level and at times really low level. I will say Skyscraper, I felt like it was mainly because Bleed were just really strong and so Virtus Pro couldn't quite go with them. But what VP are kind of doing now a little bit more on bank though, is they're getting a lot more map control. They're inside of the map. There's no balcony play, at least in comparison to a site, or sorry, a map like Skyscraper, which you play outside on the balcony, try and get these picks, these look-ins. VP are getting their feet set. They're getting inside of the map and Bleed are just right now not able to win these gunfires. You go back to Skyscraper and again, the statistic you brought up was the fact that Bleed were getting the majority of the opening kills. They were oppressive. They were hard to deal with and especially when then Bleed went on the attack. But right now, VP are doing what Bleed did to them, but here on bank. Yeah, no, it's exactly the polar opposite, right? Bleed had first bloods in all but two. That was it. Yeah. All but two of the rounds on Skyscraper. Now, obviously, the other caveat to that is that there were two trades on top of that, but Bleed was exceptionally good at drawing first blood on both attack and defense. Now the inverse is happening. VP have won three rounds in a row on three different bomb sites while getting the diffuser down on all three and either drawing first blood or trading. Outside of flawless rounds, there really isn't much better ways for Virtus Pro to win those rounds. So it's incumbent upon Bleed to fix this because you are starting on the supposed favorable side and you are sliding down the mountain. Well, guess what? VP in three rounds is gonna go on to the quote unquote better side. You are in serious trouble when that happens. Yeah, and a not so fun fact as well when it comes to Bleed so far at this tournament is the fact that they've not actually won a single map in which the opposition's map pick was in play. And so right now, this is the case once again. Virtus Pro, of course, picking bank. And right now, Virtus Pro looking, well, obviously quite strong here on bank. So this is a, a bit of a test, a really good litmus test here for Bleed is that they've not been able to get over this kind of hurdle so far at this event. Now, obviously, the good news for them is they've been able to win the deciding match. But again, BP opening kill. Reeves has just struggled to get involved so far. Just the two and four. For a player with so much capability, he's been kind of shut out of things. Hovind has continued his good work, obviously, from Skyscraper. But it's the same again here from VP. Get in the map, get the opening kill, start to put these, push these positions as Toaster. Finally, a good regress towards main stairs. That's something we haven't seen from them so far here on Bank. So this is better for Bleed. Yeah, the roam game has just not really been present. And on a map this big, it's quite surprising Swapping because back. roamers tend to have an absolute ball on Bank. And if teams can't effectively drone and roam clear, they're going to get eaten alive. A team like Bleed, who are really good at making you second guess where they are and second guess whether you want to take an engagement against players who can punish you like Reeves, Hoven, and Turd stuff. You want to be able to roam and keep Virtus Pro on their toes. That hasn't been the case so far through these three rounds. And in fact, Turdstar in particular has been a non-factor up until this point, which is very unusual given what we've seen of him so far at SI. So there's hope for Bleed, but you just have to wait out the next minute. See has, what Virtus Pro does. He has played his role really well this round, though. Yes. On the Solus main stairs, denying that drone play, then gets a kill as well. So above and beyond, at least here in the fourth round, full turn stuff. And now gets to play back of sight towards elevators as well, and eventually can make his presence known. Server side push now for Virtus Pro. So far, every single round, they have been able to get the plant down successfully. Last time out on Locker CCTV, it was the missed gas babes from Mentalist. He still has three with 35 seconds left, which means he can deny for the remainder of this round as long as he hits these successfully. This means always needs to push through with that diffuser and go forward from the entry in towards the bomb chassis. Otherwise, these gas plates must hit for Mentalist. 
I don't know if Always is going to be able to live here. He's going to get down again. He yeah, trusted his team in the first round, and Dan is there to clean up. Now it's off to Turds and Hoven, both of whom are so far removed from where the diffuser is. Why does Hoven still have a Vulcan canister in his back pocket? <laughs> That's missed utility. Utility that is very strong on a site such as this. And again, the gas pipes from Mentalist were ineffectual. This is two times in a row we've seen a lock of CCTV. Virtus Pro be able to overcome one of the more difficult and oppressive sites that we have in this game, let alone on this map. 13 seconds, Hoven can't do anything, Shepard gets that kill, VP has been ultra clinical here on bank, Turdster, nothing he can do, he did everything earlier in the round, he got rid of the drones, he won out main stairs, he made it difficult for VP, unfortunately, the rest of his team lost out on sight, Virtus Pro, even off the back of a tactical timeout from Bleed, now make it for nothing and a speed running bank. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's again, it's the same thing, they win the round, they get the very first pick, and they get the diffuser down. There really wasn't much weakness in Virtus Pro's execute there. Now, the only thing, Jake, that I can think of in regards to why he kept a Goyo canister in pocket is that there's both a Flores and a Twitch on the board. From all of the bank games that we've seen so far, the default strategy for either of those two operators is get one of the drones in and clean up those Goyo canisters very early on. It's commonplace to see two of the Goyo canisters put on the door leading in and then on the desk as well. You can put one potentially on the drop, on the hatch, but if you worry that maybe Virtus Pro aren't going to attack default, which Virtus Pro did, but let's say you on bleed think they're not gonna do that, maybe keep one in back pocket to use somewhere else, or maybe left. try to put one up later in the round, as some teams will do with a black mirror in the pocket of Mira, left. so that you can maximize its value Thank and also up. keep it hidden Attackers so that it doesn't get destroyed by one defeated. of the drones the brought by the attackers. That's all I can think of. Beyond that, it is quite indefensible for the diffuser to be planted and to still have one of those Vulcan canisters in your pocket. Do wonder if maybe the Echo with the uh, Yokai drones also could have been an option in trying to get that denial. The other part of it as well is when, you know, you mentioned those drones being able to deal with those Vulcan canisters. Well, there's a reason why Stolas is available and why you're picking it, and yeah. that can help every round by that way. utility. So, 4 nothing for Virtus Pro. Now, mind you, Parker, I've already been able to cast one 6-0 comeback this 6 Invitational. Why not go for seconds? We'll see. Uh, for Bleed, it's a, it's a very difficult proposition that they find themselves in. But you cannot give up on hope. We've seen crazy things happen already, and let alone this tournament, regardless of the history of this game. BP, though, looking really, really strong. But it goes back again statistically. Bleed have not been able to win the opposition's map pick so far this tournament, and it's proving to be difficult again. Can't Will it get opened up? There was an electric core that was thrown from a long distance, and it has hit the bullseye. Perfect. People might be wondering why you said Kanto's name. He's not active in SI. He's not here. It's because those two panels are affectionately referred to as Kanto Spot because of what he did when he was on G2 playing on Echo. He used to double reinforce those panels, sit behind a deployable shield, and he had his Yokai drones that he could use selfishly to spot for himself at the time. Have a great optic on the MP5 suppressed, and he could do some serious damage there. And that's the spot that's referred to as Kanto. Now, while the impacts. While those EMPs, rather, might not have worked to start off with, Virtus Pro are able to finally figure it out, but it comes at precious time. Under half the round to go. So you've opened it up, you've got some peak holes, but you've still got Hoven in that position, sitting and waiting. Turdsta has long range engagement, playing inside a front desk. Hoven now moving over towards stock. I think Mentalist has taken up his position by elevator. Yeah. So they're not necessarily roaming, but I like the way that bleed is spread out. I like that Mentalist is also the one in elevator because I trust him. He's someone that's a bit of a veteran on this roster, doesn't give up the position easy, but unfortunately, where well, you maybe would have wanted him on site, to defend Jake. these gunfights. Well, I mean, Jake, look, it's, it's, it's probably round over. You trust Mentalist? I do trust Mentalist. Well, you trust, I was just... you trust him to win a 1v5 ace club? Well, when I started my plaudits for Mentalist, it was a 5v5. When I ended it, it was a 5v5. Five, five, 30 seconds remaining. Always will get the plant down. It's happened again. And so far, our speed run on the bank is reaching record territories. Flawless again from Virtus Pro, who have looked sensational here on bank. And a comeback that has been clearly well worked from the break of the opening map that we had on Skyscraper, now coming over here to bank. I believe my headset is dying. So I apologize <laughs> to people's ears as it continues to pop, but... 
it's uh, it makes it challenging uh, to interject. But it's, the good news is that you can do both. You can play color and. This is the second time that I've had that particular headset that you are wearing in that particular seat die when I've been here. Maybe it's me. Maybe I am the cause for all of this. Uh, what I will say, though, again, going over to Virtus Pro here, 5 nothing. They have been able to really highlight one thing that is a strength of theirs, which is mental dexterity, mental fortitude. We've seen it throughout this tournament already. Think back to W7M when they're up 2-1. Yes, they lost to Team Liquid as well back on day one. 1-2 one, loss. That in itself already kind of highlights they were able to bounce back from that big win over M80, then a big win over W7M. So this is a team that for all intents and purposes has shown they don't just bow down. They don't just bow out. There's a lot on the line. They need to be able to win this series to get top spot in the group. They can do so even still now by winning the next two maps. Unfortunately for Bleed, they are really meeting their maker. And I'm doing as much of a job as I can to fill out while you replace your headset. I think I've timed this just about perfectly, Parker. You look like a mechanic underneath the car that is fixing it. Yes. The only downside to this headset, by the way, is that now I think I'm unmuted. I think they'd hard muted me. So I said I was a tinkerer. I've been tinkering with this headset. The only downside to this headset is the cord is much shorter. So we're gonna have it to is. get real cozy up in here, which is okay. <laughs> if this one breaks, you can just put the headset on the table and we can just take turns talking into the stage. Yes. And, and look, honestly, but a little bit disappointing from Bleed. It, it's very difficult to, to find the positives in a, in a 0 5 moment, but it's mainly because Virtus Pro have been able to just turn the ship around. It really does highlight, again, a team that has so much experience, and they've clearly not really let that skyscraper affect them. Yeah, no, not at all. And again, it really comes back to this map. I do not like the way that Bleed is playing Bang here. I don't like the way they're holding map control. I don't like how invested That's or lack of invested they are on the roam. But I mean, you got the pulse roaming? You got a nitro cell, and for the first time, he is going to draw first blood uncontested. Yeah, and better there as well. I like the pulse. It's a more of aggressive defensive operator too. Something we haven't seen from Bleed. They've really kind of gone into their shells a little bit. Hence why they found themselves in this position. Nitro Cell from third and the follow-up from Hobbit earlier, but it is unsuccessful. Really trying to play this vert control, especially with the impacts that Aspi has as well on the Solus, that who's done an amazing job. Only three drones remain with a minute 20 seconds. But Virtus Pro up above, as always, is running around with Kit and Mentalist with a nice little yellow ping. Lots of information being gained from these Valkyrie cams. And you've essentially doubled up on information with the Pulse and the Valkyrie, and then of course you've got the Solus there too. No IQ being brought from Virtus Pro. It's a bit of a misstep. Saw the IQ that was used early on when they had some issues with those Valkyrie cameras. Turd still's gonna swing. That's an ego peak that is really a stupid idea from him. I don't know why he's doing that when he had that information. You wait. I mean, you, you're sitting you're sitting on ATM, right? And you've got the Valkyrie camera right above you. Why are you swinging it? Just wait for them to peek you. I think at that moment in time, when you kind of look at the Turtster individually, it's a moment of, can I get myself into the server? Can I get sure. myself going here? I'm going to seek that contact. I'm going to go out of my way to try and find that kill. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work in this instance, but you think back to Skyscraper, and it was working. So back yourself in. Unfortunately, I think you're right, so Parker. In that moment, you have the Valkyrie. You can just allow them to push back in. Reeps is down. So this is actually a one versus four. For all intents and purposes, that start that we had has been Attack evaporated. Virtus Pro once again have been the able to get full it map control, full site control. Mentalist doesn't even really have the time to go yeah, for this revive. Go. Fakes it, maybe expecting the drop, didn't come through. They don't need to. VP's got sight. They're getting planned down. There's four people sitting inside a staff room in open area right now, and that is going to be the half. And it's a 6 0 half, Parker, unless Mentalist arguably gets one of the greater clutches that we've seen in some time. I mean, he's in a 1v5 earlier now. He's in a 1v4. He's got a castle barricade stopping him as well and I mean he's still laughing they're maintaining good spirits and I think that's very important for bleed as even if mentalist can collect a couple largely impactless kill hold on a second here now he's got Shepard and Dan next to find but the problem is is that they're split up they're not on the floor they're above and the diffuser is without of reach only three seconds for him to get on it and there's no way for him to do it Shepard was perfect above and that's five of six rounds where VP was able to get the diffuser down. Yeah, they might have given up first blood in that fateful sixth round, but at the end of the day, I think you walk away from that first half extremely pleased. That is one of the most dominant first halves. One of the most dominant halves, doesn't matter whether it was first or second, that we have seen from any team, period. And yeah, I think 
you might be spot on with turrets, but I mean, he's one in five right now, which is well below where he should be as a player and well below where he has been all of this group stage. So maybe he's trying to shake himself out of whatever funk he's currently in. I'm not certain, but VP skating through that first half, up six nothing. Mm. Clubhouse is all but guaranteed at this point. All VP needs to do is win a single round on the second most defender favored. <laughs> Yeah, and they're on defense, by the way. Just in case anybody doesn't have the visual component, VP is on defense. defense. They just need and to defense win a is good. Round. Defense is strong. We like defense. And left. for Virtus Pro, I mean, a sensational half, really. Didn't really make that many mistakes, if any, that Five I could really notice that were probably as bad as the, some of the ones we saw back with Skyscraper, such as Shepard, when we obviously was just ignorant of the Montank buff. So, well, that, that's a good highlight of what we Starting haven't seen drone. from Virtus Pro here on Bank. And really, again, highlighting how good they can be at this tournament is as bad as good as anyone else uh, like they are at that kind of level when they are on song when they are playing the way that we are seeing right now and that's also a credit because it's not like bleed or a bad roster there's probably some people tuning in right now and it's like oh 6-0 team against an apac team but there's a reason why one of those arrows is lit up in blue next to bleed they were so good back on skyscraper they were so dominant they made it so Difficult for Virtus Pro, but the same has now been reversed over here on Bank. This is a bit of a throwaway game, clearly for Bleed. Again, they've not won a single map against the opposition at this tournament. Now, that is a concern for me going into the playoffs. Something that is fixable, though. I was remarking this, uh, I was remarking about this in the green room yesterday, and it's like teams that we have very high expectations of are making very basic mistakes throughout these group stages. And I do wonder if it's just because there's been such a long period of time between professional Rainbow Six Siege. If scrim quality has declined in a number of regions, you've effectively gone three and a half months without getting proper reps in. And there's been some huge changes to the game in that time. Number one, the grenade change is massive. That alone can be the culprit as to why we've swung towards such an aggressively defender-sided meta. Then the introduction of another strong defender means that you're gonna have trouble on attack. General conventional wisdom is that it's easier to defend than it is to attack across this game. It is. So. Uh the other part of it, though, as well, is uh, if you're a team like Bleed, how often do you get to go up against teams like Virtus Pro? How exactly. often are you going up against a bit of an onslaught in terms of the attacking nature? Now, by the way, I highlighted why you might keep a Goyo canister in back pocket, and it's for that exact reason. Yep. You just saw all of those canisters that were strewn about the site gone. But it's going to be an interesting one here. Oh, Bleed okay. hits the deck, and they'll rush through Vault to equalize. Shepard dies, reaps run. trades right out. Dan is there, and you cannot shake him from this spot. There's another, though, inside of Vault. Now, Mentalist is in the site, but neither him nor Hovind. Well, there's another one there, Mentalist. Oh, they don't have access to the diffuser. It. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that's a lack of information because of the fast-paced nature of the round, and it's also a fast-paced nature of the map. Versus Pro, leaving no stone unturned in a little bit of a bounce back after a poor skyscraper. They really flex their muscles. They show the level that they can reach here at Six Invitational. An impressive showing, but... If you anticipate that you win your map and lose your opponents, then Bleed's got them right where they want them. Clubhouse, familiar territory for Virtus Pro, as they might have just seized momentum with a very impressive 7 0. We will have one final map in these group stages. Who will win, Bleed or VP? We'll find out in just a couple minutes.
from the highs of seven threes to the absolute lows of a 7-0. Doesn't get much worse. Manic, you asked right before this map started, do we have any hope of, uh, of Bleed giving it a 2-0 victory here? And, uh, you know, this is there's a reason why we said probably not. Uh, this bank was incredibly one-sided, a 7-0. Felt like we were watching Vintage VP. It really did. It was almost Vintage VP 2.0, though, mm -hmm. because they were even slower in those approaches, which in this case was a good thing. They were waiting patiently and taking full advantage of bleed just getting a little bit antsy yeah 100 percent. they were getting those opening picks all mostly thanks to joystick three and one you see him uh keep in mind only four entries but that's over half the rounds uh yeah. he's at least engaging in that opening pick and he did very well in that uh in that respect all of bleed it felt like they just were getting rolled over i mean these there were very default pushes one at a time we weren't seeing crazy roam clears we weren't seeing crazy split theory nobody was theorizing anything this was your standard pushes from virtus pro they are on a map where they're extremely comfortable on they do what they love to do and bleed just had no answers yeah if you looked in the in the middle of that scoreboard column there it shows you how the rounds panned out mm. and every round on the attack ollie it finished to time which is obviously post plan yeah what well they were farming <laughs> VP was farming today. <laughs> they were planting some crops they got the diffuser <laughs> down every single round mm -hmm. classic vp with an execute, you know, there is always a focus to an attacking round. It isn't necessarily about getting all the kills, even in situations when they were four versus one, five versus one. They're still getting the plant down because that is their win condition and yep. they don't want to leave anything up to chance here. They played one of the cleanest banks we have seen in recent memory and they can add another bank onto their tally because that's now six map wins on bank in a row. Yeah, and you know, it's no individual's fault from, from Bleed. When you lose 7-0, it's never going to be one person. And I will say some of those entries really weren't going their way. We saw um, we saw Reaps getting picked off a lot, yep. trying to roam around the top floor, roam around, kind of have that map presence. Always was just fumbling, caught sprinting sometimes, not really aware of where he was going to get pushed from. That was tough uh, a couple of times from him. But the late rounds also certainly had their struggles. They absolutely did. And to the point of six plants, that's pretty scary, to be fair. Like, I mean... All things go well, some things go wrong. There are two rounds in specific that we want to talk about, though. Yeah, I want to talk about the basement pushes because this was caught on the cast briefly, and this is supposed to be the bomb site that you win, right? We've got rounds one and four to show you where they go for these plants, and I just want to focus on uh, on mentals on the smoke in particular. This first round, I don't think it's that bad, right? The, the C4 is going to deny the default plant. The smoke is supposed to uh, deny behind the bomb chassis. It gets shot out by Dan. I think Dan, despite not getting a single kill, maybe the MVP of that round. But then round four, it gets a little bit worse. That second smoke from Mentalist literally smokes off his teammate. Asfi, because of that smoke in the hallway, now cannot go for the swing and even challenge Dan until the smokes run out, which gives always the perfect opportunity to go for this plant. And he'd already used his C4, so that wasn't exactly a factor. But it's still these little mistakes that you're like, oh, if only we had had a, a better angle on that. If only we had had the ability to, to shut that down, to just fix that quickly. They could have had a much better round, a much safer round. Again, on a bomb slate, which you really should be winning. And again, you look at the time when that plant started to go down, it's in and around that 30 second mark and they're already baiting out utility. Mm -hmm. We're already seeing two smokes thrown. We're already seeing no one with a C4 in hand. That means that the work has been done prior. So even though we call VP a slow team, it's slow and methodical. They're getting a lot done in the time that they have and they're experts with the clock. That they are, and they're gonna have to be as we move to our third and final map of this series, Clubhouse. This one is sure to be, uh, I'm just gonna say tough for Bleed. I, I, there's yeah. no two ways. Yeah, I, I, I go back to that Oregon ban and it caught us off guard in the in the prep phase uh, before the match started. It still comes back to haunt them. They, they could have banned Bank. They could have even banned the club. I mean, this is a map that Virtus Pro, it's their most commonly played map. Their, ro their record has been a little bit rocky. Uh, their last play was a 7-4 loss against Liquid. They lost all five attacking rounds in that game so we have seen weaknesses but for bleed their first clubhouse game in team history came here at si against w7m and they lost because it's w7m yeah so i'm a little bit concerned i mean we go back and we question the map bands right we question why the oregon was allowed through after we've back we've seen the bank now we're looking at this clubhouse and we're starting to think well okay we know that there's potential from both these sides but recent history shows that neither team has really got a great handle of this map mm -hmm. and because of that you've got to then look at what's just happened yes you've just seen a 7-0 
that's got to count for something. Now, one thing I actually am going to say to counter that, yes, I'm an analyst now, that's right. <laughs> uh, if you looked at the faces on Bleed as they were getting slaughtered, like, like <laughs> slaughtered in the server, they're smiling, they're mm -hmm. laughing, yeah. they're fist bumping. They do not seem to be phased whatsoever. Yeah, complete opposite of the phase uh, of our previous game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the vibes in this room were very different. Um, I, I think that's something that's always been the case with Bleed, right? They've always been in Atlanta. This, they were famous for this, always having a smile on their faces. And I think it kind of comes down to the mentality of they're entering this tournament. They're not expecting to win. They're just here to have some fun. And if they win a couple games, if they beat some of the best teams in the world on the way, then hey, that's the, just fine by them. They got Joel the fish. <laughs> they got a fish. <laughs> oh, and also, also, can can I welcome you? I'm just going to move across here a little bit. That's Joe. Joe the mannequin. Joe oh, the, the mannequin. mannequin. Yeah. So Joel the fish and Joe the mannequin. We caught them out uh, out the front of their game last <laughs> night, and we said, "What what's the go? What's happening here? Why like why do we have a mannequin? Yeah. Are they we, just going to keep acquiring these sort of I think that's trophies? The almost. I think that's what the plan. That's the idea. It's it's the the plan is to. I mean, could you imagine if like two three years down the line they make it to every the booth event. is just full. <laughs> The, the players are like this because there's just mannequins and fish. I and mean, Reeves will be fine. Reeves doesn't need a lot of space. No. Reeves his mouse bat is it's like this big. It's tiny. So like, there's a bit of room in there. I think we could fit a lot of mannequins down there. That has got to throw you off. That has got to throw you off. If you're sitting there and you're watching that, you see mannequins, you see fish. You don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. All we know is that we are going to Clubhouse. Now, before I throw, I do want to apologize for the reference I made earlier. I said Bert Nerdy. What I really meant to say is a couple of Muppets. I mean, I, I'll take that. I think that's rude. I'm not, I'm not too happy about that, Rob. But I do want to say very quickly, sensational work to you, Mr. Manic, for your first six invitational hosting, because obviously he's only got one more little desk segment after this game. So well done, Rob. Good job. And hopefully we'll see you again in the future. What we've got, though, coming up is a very important game. You win this if you're Virtus Pro, and it's going to be top of the group. You win this if you're Bleed, and it's going to be a far better seeding than what is looking to be fourth place. So there's a lot on the line here for both teams. If you finish fourth right now for Bleed's sake, it means you go and start in the lower side of the bracket. You want to arguably start on the top side. Usually, you want to be able to pick your opponent. And as far as I'm aware, the way that the seeding works is that the teams that finish first in their groups get to pick their opponents, which is why, as far as I have been told, and I don't know if you've had any conflicting information presented to you, Jake, it's that there will be no seeding show after this broadcast. Now, obviously on the B stream, you got another matchup going on. You've got Fury versus Los at the moment. And it's being cast by Guz and Pengu. We're over here on Bleed Virtus Pro. If you want to watch both of them, go right ahead. But obviously, there's a lot at stake here. As far as I'm aware, Fury is not going home? No. Scars, unfortunately, from That's Japan correct. are going to be saying farewell to this competition. Fury uh, and Lost One are basically fighting over second and third place right now because Sonics has topped that group, Group D, and they did so undefeated. I don't believe I've ever casted Scars. I can't... Really? I'm trying to remember if I have. If I've casted Scars, I feel like I've done it maybe one time. Mm. But other than that, it's a team that I just have never had an experience being able to cast. Sometimes that happens. In the APAC North days, they were always great locally, but could never get into APAC North and therefore could yeah. never get to said international event. So I think that would be a, a, a good reason why. Uh, we head to Clubhouse, by the way, deciding map. The good news for Bleed. Now, the bad news earlier was that they, again, and I repeat it, had never been able to win an opposition's map pick so far at this tournament. Well, it's no longer an opposition's map pick. It's the decider map, and they've had a good record at winning said decider map. So far, they've, of course, won 2-1 over Team Liquid, and they won 2-1 over M80. So they've been able to win these third and decisive final maps in these series so far throughout the tournament. Uh, and I also think, you kind of think back to Skyscraper, so dominant, incredible. VP, they were just like, yeah, let's just wipe this one, blank reset, go into bank. Well, Bleed now need to do the same. We're into a new map. Forget about Bank. It doesn't exist anymore. The 7-0 could have been a 7-5. It doesn't make a difference in the grand scheme of things. We are 0-0. Zero, zero. We are map three. And this is going to be the final map of the day. I mean, it's a best of one shootout at this point, Ten right? You have remaining. effectively one map to seal the deal, and that's all. Now, for Bleed, they have opted to go onto defense of Clubhouse again. History repeats itself in this regard, so I have to say it. This is a very defender-sided Rainbow Six Siege that we are looking at. Every single one of the maps in the map pool 
favor the defenders. There is nary a single attacker favored map. Clubhouse has been consistently one of the most played maps here at SI, but somehow has managed to become more friendly to the attackers as time has gone on. At one point was the most defender side of map. Now it sits middle of the pack, but still you expect the defense to take four of those six rounds. If Virtus Pro can very quickly win one or two rounds, then three will be in trouble. We will see what happens for the remainder of this first half. One good thing about Clubhouse, I think, for Bleed, it can go back a little bit to that skyscraper where I wouldn't be opposed to seeing them, you know, take these little fights towards breaches, towards windows, try and get in the face of Virtus Pro. More importantly, they can also fall back to site. Something they did a really good job of on skyscraper was pushing out, deny entry, and then fall back to site. They couldn't really do that on bank. They felt very strangulated. It's a very complex map, and they clearly just failed to meet the criteria. Virtus Pro were far too experienced and far too strong, but I do have a sense of feeling that on Clubhouse, this should not be another 7-0. Maybe that's just a bit of hope <laughs> oh. within me. And Dan does get the opening kill onto an Aspie that was clearly roaming up above. They've dealt with that. Really, for Blade, you probably just have to take this moment to think about, should we go back to site or do we want to counter aggress? I think Aspie was trying to ego challenge that window upstairs in weight room. It doesn't work out. And very quickly, you see that Virtus Pro assess that they have more of the map than they probably bargained for. Now, there's another roamer of the Capkin down below, so you need to take care of Hoven at some point, who gets droned out, and will luckily have asked me to sit on cams and watch to make sure that he is not being pressured. Still on the run, as VP cannot get bogged down with this roamer, though. You've still got to get to the bomb site down below, so take care of Hoven. There you go. Shepard has done just that. Excellent start to this reverse break. I think that's an overcommit a little bit from Hoven. Does a really good job of denying time and taking the approach from VP away from sight and more so into the roam clear. But he does eventually lose his life after having already lost Aspi earlier. Now puts them at a big disadvantage where they can get overloaded on sight. Church Arsenal, very good to defend here in Clubhouse. You do not want to be losing these kind of rounds. So a really big moment here for Bleed to be able to just dig deep, scrap something together. Don't bring that kind of bank mentality here to the close here. Mentalist turd reefs. Basically your three big star players still alive. Now, the big thing, of course, is that you've got a numbers advantage, but you don't have a time advantage. Only 20 seconds left for Virtus Pro to hit the site. So these final two players from Bleed, as they've just lost turd stuff, can easily hold the angles where you know these players on VP need to drop from. Reef walking up as the bees go around him, the fire will burn. Mentalist trying to stop the diffuser from being planted, it won't work. And a statement round from Virtus Pro as they win the first round, and the more importantly, the first attacking round flawless. Yeah, and really, really solid from Virtus Pro because it's very easy to be critical of Bleed, but in that moment, VP have been able to roam clear a very aggressive Bleed roster that did such a good job of that kind of similar playstyle back on Skyscraper. So VP have clearly done a good job, mainly because they over-droned it. They had like three drones left with 90 seconds in the round, park. That means that they are extensively trying to find these Bleed members and flush them out. Even if it does mean they're going to hit site late, at least they know they're going to be able to hit site with a numbers advantage, and they were able to do just that in that basic order as well. Really well done from VP as well. Joystick and no point probably had much of an intention to drop the stock hatch. They had information. He was able to just basically sit there on the grim and just keep sending out those hive launches, those bees that just clear out so much of that side of the map towards Arsenal, especially with the incendiaries from the Kappa Tower as well. Really well played from Virtus Pro. Bleed, if you're going to play that Rome game, you're going to have to be more concise in terms of what you want to do. If you want to deny time, that's great. But Hoven at some point needed to get back to site. Yeah, and I mean, I think a huge part of that round falling for Bleed was Hoven, right? It's not uncommon to see a roam on Clubhouse and then at about the two minute mark, so a minute off of the clock, your roamers go back to the site and then hold your default angles. You stack somebody up in blue, you maybe put somebody over towards dirt, one by guns or case or dummies. You keep somebody inside a church. Maybe you have one person playing over by dummies and then another playing underneath the hatch by kitchen. When you have two players roaming, and they're unsupported as they were for Bleed, you need to manage the clock better. Bleed did not do that. Virtus Pro were able to get the picks and then move forward, knowing that they had time working against them. So hats off to Virtus Pro for being quick to get to the site.
a wag of the finger to bleed for being a little bit too slow to get back. And Virtus Pro very narrowly missed out on getting the Diffuser planted as well, which would have been their sixth time planting the Diffuser in the last seven rounds on attack. Now, mind you, already lesson learned here for Bleed, not over contesting, say, main breach and CCTV. They fall back as well, triple stack towards the main stairs side of thing. It's same site, same setup, and the same kind of similar play style from Bleed, but they're doing it more so as a coordinated unit. Sure, Reaps has taken some damage, but they're also getting rid of drones because, again, as I mentioned in that opening round, Virtus Pro, they over droned. They want to clear the room, so they're going to drone it out. But they still find double kill because Dan on the balcony window basically just looks into bedroom and says, oh, that's where you guys are hiding. Well, here you go. Bullet for you, bullet for you, and there's one for you. Three dead again. A very concise room clear for Virtus Pro. Why? Look at the drone game. They are over droning these positions of bleed to hunt them down, find them out, and shut them outside of the server. Mentalist and Hoven now left, and obviously at this point you have to go for something. Yeah, I, and I mean, you might look at it and might be a little bit confused as to why Hoven is walking up the stairs to engage inside a barn. It's because if Mentalist and Hoven just sit in the site for the next minute and 20 seconds, they're gonna die. You've got so much utility still from Virtus Pro. Capital still has full utility. Joystick still has the Jackal Inox to be able to just see wherever with the smokes as well. Flashbangs galore. You've got eight flashbangs. So a minute to go. You cannot sit and wait. Lead respond to that. Hoven wants to challenge. He takes a bunch of damage, immediately peels off, and now they have to do the bad task of just sitting and waiting. He might be able to pick up a kill or two, but hard pressed to imagine Virtus Pro walking away Bob with a loss a in this round. I'm going to say it now. I think they need to call a tactical timeout immediately. I don't, even if they somehow win the round, Mentalist and Holven, very unlikely as it is, I think a TT is required at this moment for a couple of reasons. One, just what we're seeing so far through the opening two rounds. VP have got so much control, but it's a lot of similarities to Bank. And they've obviously had already a tiny little break, talk things over, come into club. Whatever they talked about clearly hasn't worked straight away. This site in particular, Church Arsenal, is the site defensively for clubhouse left. you need to be winning these rounds you've now already given over two attacking Attack rounds to Virtus pro it's the same storylining that we had play out back on bank i've been doing a decent job here to try and at least do something into disrupting Virtus pro but the damage has been done about a minute and a half ago into the round when dan got a double kill up on that balcony looking into bedroom that really just overloaded that position because they had lost two players and then the round was done the only kill so far for Bleed as well came from the EDD, so it wasn't a player actively engaging That's in true. the fight, right? It was Hoven's gadget. Go. Now, hey, he's bucked the trend, takes Pasha out, and pre-fires through the floor, but will ultimately run through the fire and then die to Shepard at the hands of the Para. 2-0 for VP right away. I know you're gesturing for the timeout, and you're trying to manifest one from Bleed, but as of right now, they have not called it, and they will continue onwards. A couple things about Bleed. Oh, you got it the final second they were able to call in the timeouts. And you're right, settle them down right away because the only kills through those two rounds came in the previous round with Hoven picking up one from his EDD and then one in the post plant, which was relatively ineffective. So Julio is going to talk through the team, but look at this. When they were on attack, on bank, mm -hmm. five rounds where VP drew blood first. They traded out one of those rounds. Oh, they when they were on defense. Pick. Sorry? Oh, VP, so yeah, VP on When attack. VP were on attack. They got the diffuser down in five of the six rounds on bank. They won all six of the rounds. Yep. They drew first blood in five of the six. One of those rounds, of course, was traded out. Now, here on Clubhouse, VP almost got the diffuser down in round number one. They were a nanosecond away. The only reason why they didn't was because they got the kill before the diffuser could <laughs> be planted, but it was a formality at that point. Second round, VP gets diffuser down, and what a surprise, they got first blood in both rounds one and two. Virtus Pro's attacks over these two maps have been so formidable, and a big part of it is Bleed's ineffective defense. However, you cannot allow a team in this meta to win eight attacking rounds in a row the way Virtus Pro has done across two maps. They are barely breaking a sweat here, and Bleed is honestly showing that they have issues with their map pool and they have issues with their strategy. I don't know how much Julio is going to be able to fix in a single timeout, but the hope is that you at least make it a Bob little bit closer than it's been. Bleed up not to go down to church for a third time. Instead, they will go upstairs to cash and CCTV, which necessitates a complete change to the way that you play this game.
Yeah, and I think for Bleed, it's a case of just dealing with the pressure from Virtus Pro, and that pressure is also not necessarily just from the players, but the drone. You just When you're getting over-droned like that, you can't feel comfortable inside of the map. In that last round as well, they did have a very old extension towards Cash and CCTV. They gave it up. They elected to push back over towards main. And they, at some point, needed to hold that, because you still want to contest. You want to bleed a bit of that time. But as soon as Dan just goes over the balcony, opens up the window, gets two kills. I mean, that those are the little things where it's like, did we do much wrong there? We obviously want to be able to contest up above, make sure they can't get free position. We want to obviously bleed that clock. But if Dan's going to hit some just a sicko double kill, there's not much more we can really do to that. So credit obviously for Virtus Pro, but I'm really looking to some kind of response from bleed. That is now the onus is on them from bank, now into club, like you said, eight attacking rounds, but more importantly, just nine rounds overall. Like that is the streak we find ourselves in, which is super surprising after what we saw from Skyscraper, where Bleed were exceptionally good. Right now though, Virtus Pro have flipped that script entirely, and they are aiming for that top spot in the group and doing so really well. Main Breach opened up, timely mana, no real contest from Bleed, but this might be the site that could help them out. Why? It's a little bit more set in their approach of holding just key positions. That's no roam clear, which is what Virtus Pro have done a good job in dealing with. Yeah, I mean, on this, you're going to play what we used to refer to as aggressive site, which is that you won't play on the site itself, but you'll be aggressively within striking distance of that. When you look at cash CCTV, aggressive site means holding top of red, which isn't an actual component of the bomb site. It also means holding garage and or rafters. Now, most teams are going to control rafters. We saw two players actually in that position Attackers right now for bleed. Both Aspie and Hoven are in this spot. They do not have the advantage of an Azami. And I think this is worth noting because part of what makes holding garage rafters so strong is Azami. Adewamai, and you've suddenly got a huge beachhead that the defense can use to their advantage. Now, Aspie dies, so clearly Virtus Pro are not struggling with said beachhead. It's also necessitated Hoven to drop off of rafters and play the bottom of garage. So now Bleed have completely conceded the top of garage. And that's excellent for Virtus Pro. Not so great they've lost Pasha. Turtsta gets on the board. They need a big game from Turtsta if Bleed wants to stay in this. 45 seconds, always has taken a lot of damage. He's got the diffuser in hand. You have to juggle that diffuser if you want to get the plant down because always will die to a ton of different things that Bleed has at their disposal. Bleed need to be wary of the fact they don't have any kind of garage control, be it rafters or down below as Shepard gets a kill onto Reeves. Oh, and three for the young superstar as Hovind is just left up in flames, drops in towards bot red stairs and makes his way back up. Triple stack breach though does give Bleed an option, a chance to hit some good shots. Turtsa finds a second in the round as always has made his way to in towards the corner right side of the bridge an unconventional planting spot but a successful one especially when you've got the numbers to cover him and they've done a really good job of that response here surely needs to come apt and swift from bleed if they're going to find a win in this round lovely headshot from always and Virtus Pro have been able to just go to another level and as of right now and back also back on bank bleed can't match them well, the lack of rafters control is really going to hurt them here because Turdston will find his fate at the hands of Joystick on that position. When you plant on the breach, as we saw Virtus Pro do, the best way to deny that is on rafters. If you lose control of rafters, it means that there are only two ways, barring a C4 from below or a Solus from below, to punish you. A, you have to pressure from red. That's what we saw. Joystick covered it, got the kill, always got the diffuser down. The only other way is that cash door. He didn't have anybody there because the mural was too focused on top of red and rightfully so. Surrendering control of garage and rafters as early as bleed did. And part of that is because they can't hold it with the same success due to the lack of a zombie. You're gonna be in a lot of trouble. now. Bleed could have attempted a rafters hold stronger with a Wamai, but instead they opt out of it. And I don't disagree with that take. If you can't go all in on holding rafters, then you need to spread your defenders out elsewhere. So hold rafters for a bit, fall back, coalesce around the site, very similar to what we see when teams defend church down below, hold top floor, hold bedroom, hold weight room, scamper back to the site. That's perfect. Don't over invest in a particular part of the map that you don't intend to hang on to. However, don't be surprised when that loss of map control, as we saw, is the direct result of you not investing in it and more importantly, directly leads to your opponent's planting where you are most vulnerable. Virtus Pro does that. There's no answer back from Bleed. They were trapped in the site. They all get picked off. They die.
The ramifications right now with the way that things are playing out. BP currently on their way to top of this group, which means for W7M, they drop down a spot. They will drop down to second. For Bleed, it also means they drop down to the lower bracket in the playoffs as they would be finishing in fourth. So for Bleed, if they want to go at least for that upper bracket, if they want to give an up, uh, a helping hand to W7M, they need to bring this game back. Very difficult now statistically as they've already given up more than you typically should when it comes to clubhouse. Breach opened up towards Jacuzzi, courtesy of those Salmas of the 8th. No, massive defense immediately there. You do have Mentalist on the mirror on the bathroom position. That's a big waste of a mirror window. Let's be completely honest. I mean, the reason why you're going to put a mirror window on Jacuzzi wall is so that you can hold inside a bathroom, eject the mirror window, and impact any explosives or hard breach that gets put on that panel. Instead, all you do set the black mirror up, back off, and then they just throw those Thelmas on the wall for free after the EMPs have gone off. A very puzzling decision from Bleed, especially when you could have just not put a black mirror on that wall, kept one in pocket, maybe one over towards Logi or construction, and then one inside a bathroom. Mentalist doesn't even keep one in pocket. Bleed are not hanging on to the bathroom at all. They've completely forfeited any part of the map that can watch Jacuzzi Breach, and I don't like that very much. Again, no Kaeda as it has been banned out makes defending these kind of reinforced walls a little bit more difficult. Pasha over towards Rafters, looking in, joystick down below inside a lounge. Good map control here so far for Virtus Pro, but time, yeah, not the greatest. 60 seconds left, but time's no factor when you're just finding kills as easily as they have been able to do so. It's another opening kill for Virtus Pro. Bleed have just not really been able to offer much in terms of a response. No trades even coming through. How many times have we seen the same round play out so far throughout Bank and also Clubhouse? It is slaughter after slaughter. It is so clinical from Virtus Pro and they are setting themselves up to top this group and take an immense amount of form going into the playoffs if they continue in this path. Mentalist by himself again. It's not the first time I have said that in this series. This time he finds a kill onto Shepard. 30 seconds left. It'll take something crazy, a miracle. Ooh. But miracles do happen time to time as he gets three to make it a one versus two. Suddenly the round becomes extraordinarily winnable. Always has to plant. That means there's two 1v1s available for Mentalist. Second. He's got a Nitro Cell as well, but luck runs out right as you toss over to me. I can't tell if Dan is showing some frustration with the way that that pulled out. It certainly looks like it. I don't speak Russian. I can't understand what he's saying. But I will say this much. Prior to Mentalist's 3K, which ultimately did nothing to change the tide of that round, Virtus Pro had four kills in four rounds. Four kills. Reaps, Aspie, and Mentalist were all without a kill. Now, Reaps and Aspie are still without a kill. But Mentalist obviously put three up on the board before losing. And he came very close to beating Dan, for what it's worth. But still, this is not sustainable whatsoever for Bleed. They are getting brought back down to Earth. Four rounds in a row for Virtus Pro here on Clubhouse, which means that... Located by attackers. It has been almost an hour and 45 minutes since Bleed won a round. I'm bewildered, Parker. I really am. I need to just say it because this is a very good roster. Bleed are no pushovers, and yet it's happening. And so that's the disappointing factor. It's one thing for a team that, say, uh, had already been grouped, for instance, and it's just the, the scheduling meant that it's a bit of a dead rubber. Sure. But this is a team that's going to go play playoffs. This is a team that has already had a really good couple of results at this tournament. 2-1 over Liquid, 2-1 over M80. They took a map on day one against W7M, two-time defending champions. This is not a team that is here for fun. They are here to compete and contend. And right now, as you mentioned, it's been close to two hours since they've won a round. I'm bewildered again as to how this is happening, but it's so much credit to Virtus Pro. It was about 5.30, give or take, when that matchup ended. It is now seven o'clock. So, that's how long it's been since Bleed has been able to win a round. Now, obviously, there's been breaks in between then, and there was an entire other map played, but it's worth putting they didn't win a single round on that map. And now the same thing is happening here. But this, I could excuse if Virtus Pro was on defense. If Virtus Pro started yes. off Clubhouse on defense 4 nothing, I really wouldn't be thinking much of it. Yeah, obviously it would not be good for Bleed, but then you have the second half to overcome that deficit. The problem is, is that Bleed is starting on the better side. There is no way around it. I'm not going to mince words. They are losing the plot 
on the better half of this map. That is the most worrying prospect for them. So their roam right now is nowhere near as pronounced. It looks like almost all of these players are within the site. Mentalist, Aspie, Turnster, Reeves, and Hoven are actually all in the bomb site right now. So with a minute and a half to go, there's greater restraint from Bleed. We were critical of that earlier on with the fact that they play too loose with map control and time. So Bleed has made an improvement on that front. Yeah, but the problem is that you're going up against the Captain Tower and a Grim that do a really good job of displacing you when you are on site. So you're also then giving Virtus Pro full map control, full clearance. They can open floorboards. They can also now go for many different of entry opportunities. You've got Kitchen, you've got Motor, you've got Stock. You can go Dirt. And I actually see two outlines heading towards the Dirt location. They have Secret, they've got Main, they've got one Oil Pit. Parker, they have everything. Virtus Pro are understanding. These guys are scared. They are sitting on site. So we are going to take every kind of opportunity in terms of a pathway to make sure they have to watch every single angle. Well, over an oil pit, that's where Dan will make his approach with 35 seconds left, but we'll have to wait out the flames in front of him. Always on the other side of the map, going through dirt, escorting Pasha on in as the flash goes, and there's the Alda. Pasha with the very first kill, Mentalist being softened up as well. There go the bees as Dan, long range, gets another for Virtus Pro with Joystick, a third. So close to flawless rounds for VP. They might be eluding them this time around, but Hoven's single kill is rewarded with a death. Reap searching for kill number one. Aspie dies without one. Pasha getting the diffuser down, and it's a single kill in that round for Bleed. Five in a row for VP, and four of those rounds, Jake. Four of those rounds were either flawless or were about to be flawless until the final moment for Virtus Pro. Dreadful is not a strong enough word to describe how this map and the previous map have been going for Bleed. Well, the good thing for me is that no one can see me right now, but if you do want to know what I look like, it's Turdstar, which Gorgeous. is just hands back oh. on the chair, back slouch back, going, what is going on? Again, for Virtus Pro, they are doing everything perfectly. They're not doing any, they're not making any mistakes. They're not giving Bleed any kind of options. In terms of what those options there is, could look, be. Oh, yeah, look. that's me right that's now. You right that now. is me right now. I'm not as handsome, but that is me right now. That's a lie, I think you're more handsome. And so for Virtus Pro, they have no contest. You could see it in that round. They were able to go for a late rotate dirt and have a dirt and blue push. And that was able to then pinch those on site. They had one in the hatch. They were obviously utilizing the Capital Grim combo, which is becoming a bit of a staple here yep. on Clubhouse to displace those that opt to go for that site hold defense. Years gone by, that's very strong. But right now that doesn't work. There was no main stairs, late flank from bleed. There was no kind of roam game. They were offering no kind of offensive defense which is something that was so strong back on Skyscraper. And it's why I'm a little bit perplexed because what made them so good on Skyscraper was they were setting the tone. The pacing of it was based off of their actions. Their actions right now, though, have been ultra defensive. They've gone into their shells and VP are too good, Parker. They are way too good. Maybe back in APAC, it could work to slow the game down, get it back on your terms, but VP are just abusing you. The desk talked about this, both Jesse and Ollie were weighing in on the map pool when the map vetoes came in all the way back at the start of this series. And they said, you know, Virtus Pro have not the strongest map pool, but they're very good on the maps that they're good on. And it's just, it's hard to overcome that, right? Five rounds in a row on attack on Clubhouse is unheard of right now. Same with Bank, seven in a row. It's 12 rounds in a row now for Virtus Pro. And yes. I will argue that this matchup is far heavier for VP than it is for Bleed. Do I think Bleed care if they win this matchup? Yes, because every team does. But do you think Bleed is sweating it as much as a match where they could be competing for first in the group? No, I don't think so. And I know you said you don't like the phrase saving strats, but if Bleed don't really need to show anything and they think the outcome won't change that much, then why play that hard to reveal yourself on maps that now your opponents might think you are weak on? Because what you've just done on Bank and you are now doing on Clubhouse is essentially deceiving your opponents into thinking you are worse than you are. I love you, Parker, but I think what we saw on Skyscraper probably says no to that idea because I actually thought they showed really good strats and showed no, really good play. And it means that if teams do their homework come playoff time, you do not give Bleed Skyscraper. You give them bank you give them club but that could be what they want Maybe. of course that is obviously a tinfoil hat here that is like 5d chess on a checkers board playing monopoly i mean 
Was it was it G2 who, oh my, was it G2 who looked dreadful on a map and then turned around and just smoked a team the next day and said, yeah, we deliberately played poorly so that they would take us to that. I think it was Fabian who said that. It was all the way back, and I believe it was like the Paris Major. Obviously, this is just idle speculation because Bleed are not this bad of a team. No, they're not. Bleed are not a team that loses 12 rounds in a row, yet they have. And this, what could be a 13th round in a row against them, starts off with them losing Aspi, who is yet to get a kill and is also the Echo. You have no Yokai drones for the final 30 seconds. Such an amazing amount of confidence from Virtus Pro right now, but that confidence is going to be decimated by the time. 20 seconds means they have to go a little bit quicker in their approach, which means they're not going to be able to clear the angles, which means finally Bleed are able to win some of these gunfights, and so oh. therefore Bleed are going to get a round. Finally. It feels like it has been about an hour and a half because, well, it has been an hour and a half. Four versus one, no chance for Shepard that were never able to actually get Jacuzzi Wall opened up. And for a round that probably doesn't have too much meaning, barring some kind of miraculous comeback from Bleed, again, wasn't that long ago that I got to cast a 6-0 comeback. It is possible. It will be incredibly difficult, though, with Bleed now going over to the attack. You mentioned that before. If this was like Bleed attacking, struggling, but now get to go on the defense, it would be an entirely different storyline that we present. But in this moment for Virtus Pro, what a sensational hour and a half of Siege that we saw from them, to the point that it might be the best hour and a half of Siege that we've seen from a team. This is Invitational. They didn't make any mistakes. They were very oppressive. They basically strangulated Bleed throughout those rounds. They made them look second rate, and that is on VP. Obviously, they're having a little bit of fun with it, and you mentioned it's not do or die. But you have now given up a top spot in the upper bracket final. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Bleeder coming into this matchup saying, hey, let's completely toss these two no. rounds in a row. But I think there might come a time where on a map like Bank, when you are so far behind, you realize that why don't we just get through this? It's not going to favor us. We'll reset for Clubhouse. Then you get to Clubhouse and you think, okay, well, things are very bad here. I think Mentalist shouted, chat, we got around. That's what it sounded like to me. We got around. I mean, congratulations. I think that is cause for celebration. But Reeps, one kill. This is a player who is so much better than one kill across six rounds of action. Aspie, still zero kills. Mentalist, three kills. Only came on that attempted clutch. But you know what's interesting? I used the term for bleed back on Skyscraper as almost like an onion in the fact that they played like a layered system. And so when you kind of play that kind of system, it means that everyone has an equal part. As great as Reaps is individually, as you could say the same for Turf, Mentalist, etc. They have to play as a unified team. And the unified teams means that you're either going to play well together or you're going to have, well, some bad moments together. And I think that's probably been the case for bleed where it's like, oh, we're, we're struggling, but we're struggling as a team. So at least they're all falling apart together. That's something. You, you win as a team and you certainly lose. You lose as a team. You certainly lose as a team right now. But I mean, it's also a bit of a humbling for Bleed. This is a team that has been talking an unbelievable amount of trash. I don't know if you saw all the posts that poured out like water through a sea against M80 yesterday. There was The tweets were incredible from them. And I think in a way they can have the community behind them in Atlanta, they were fan favorites. Mm. People even bought the damn fish to show up at the event to show their support for this team. But at the same time, that cockiness and that arrogance will eventually start to alienate people who might otherwise cheer for you. And it's gonna make enemies. So at some point, Bleed are gonna go from fan favorites who trash talk to potentially in the middle to even Villains. W7M are becoming villains. We see that turn in front yeah. of our eyes. G2 love being villains. It's possible that Bleed can get there as well. So a humbling will slow that process Well, that's down. one thing I like about Virtus Pro. They just go about their business. They just get the job done. And the job done so far gets them now top spot in a very dominant group. Maybe the most stacked group that we anticipated when we saw the groups. And so for them to be able to top it, especially with W7M, it really does speak volumes to what this team might just be able to achieve at this tournament. I don't think anyone's going to walk away by like, oh, nah, VP can't actually win at all. I legitimately think they can. I think they've shown more than enough. We saw that against W7M, probably one of the best matches that we've had at Six Invitational so far in the strength v strength component. Sure, Bleed have been a little bit disappointed in this match, but it really does highlight how good Virtus Pro can be, and they can make good teams look a little second rate. Now, this is a play I've already seen from a couple of teams so far, the little sneak in main stairs, they go for the plant. It's a little bit more difficult to stop than the conventional kitchen drop, but so far, as has been the case in this series, Virtus Pro have done a good job of finding these kills anyway. Mentalist is going to try and get this plan.
Flash behind the Talon Shield. Reaps gets the kill onto Always, and this suddenly becomes very winnable now for Bleed, and Reaps again has now activated. Three in quick succession. Mentalist goes for the reposition so that Joystick can't kill him from behind, which is what he tried to do from that Moto push, and now he can go for the plant. Joystick is always a threat, but that's Reaps finally waking up. And honestly, that hatch control was humongous for this team. Sitting on top of the hatch and catching all of these players from Virtus Pro as they attempt to stop the plant behind the talent shield. I like that you point out that it's happened before. It's not particularly innovative from the side of Bleed because we've seen it before, but it is successful. And especially if you don't relinquish control on the top floor, which as you saw from Reeves, he did not. He and Mentalist played that perfectly. Reeves governing over the bomb site. Mentalist working around the shield. And then when they assess that it's just Pasha and Joystick left, reposition over towards Dunnies, over towards Case, and get that plant down. And that's exactly what you need to do, because if you don't, you can get pushed through the soft walls or shot. Should there be an explosive on the board, which you're not necessarily sure if there is an impact grenade, you can be down. Mentalist moving over to link up with Reaps after he gets those picks, and drops down to engage head on, is perfect for bleed. So. Two rounds in a row now where Bleed has found some momentum seemingly here. And we have a very rare attacker-sided clubhouse with only a single round won by the defenders up to this point. And the good thing I like about that round is it kind of highlights again why we were a little bit bewildered as to the performance from Bleed so far back on bank and then obviously the start of the clubhouse because that round in which they played, the way it was formulated reminded me again of what we saw from them on Skyscraper and how good they were. They had a plan of attack, they executed it. Obviously some really good individual play from Reaps holding the hatch, had to hit some good shots and he did. But clearly they had a plan in place and they were able to execute it against what has become a very formidable Virtus Pro in this series. So really well done from them. Two fight. This game's certainly not over. And, and look, I've seen funnier things happen. And the attacker side of Clubhouse would not be one of them. It wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world. Now, Shepard goes for the mirror window on Kennels. That gets broken and then he pops it. Now, that's going to make it a little bit more annoying to open up the wall. No, absolutely. And we're also overlooking the fact that things went really badly for Bleed at the beginning of that round, right? They dropped two players, Virtus Pro was in a 5v3, Mentalist had to abort the plant, and they trusted Reaps, and the trust ultimately paid off. So, Virtus Pro still have access to their timeout. As you said, Bleed had to burn theirs relatively early on. The previous map. So, if you're worried about Bleed, worry not. The attackers are doing well. The attackers are doing fine. Garage opened up. Rafters control was so important for Bleed when they were on defense. They surrendered it early. Virtus Pro took it on the first half. Obviously, and VP excelled because of that. If VP relinquished control above, there could be a huge problem. Joystick dies inside of Lounge to Hoven. As Reaps now sets up down below the site as Buck. Yeah, this is a, an interesting little proposition now for Virtus Pro. What do you do? Because you've got a four-man stack on site. You lost your one player that was kind of down below in lounge, playing a bit of that vert and could deny those looking to push in from below. Now, Bleed, with a minute and 10 seconds, have actually got a lot of this map control down below. They've got full garage if they want to go. Always is still on the rafters, but not playing deep rafters. More so just holding in towards that CCTV window of rafters. It means he does have a bit of an in to get back to site. Under 60 seconds. Pressure still needs to come, though, from Bleed now. Certainly from that con position, which is where Mentalist is going to attack from. Salma from Aspie, they've got one on the balcony, of course, in Aspie, watching that CC window, especially if anyone wants to get aggressive from VP. But they are all now, like, double stacked red, Shepard's down, of course, onto Sai, always in rafters, so they're really just hemmed in, being pushed back by Bleed. 40 seconds left, with Hoven still having full utility on this Capital. Mentalist's torch has not been much of a factor. He's got flashbangs, though, as well. As here comes the fire, and here comes the smoke. Shepard managing to avoid it for right now. He pops up, missing a golden opportunity on the turd stuff and it looks like bleed might answer back with their own flawless round and we've got ourselves a ball game yeah loved that from bleed incendiaries over towards the red side so they couldn't rush back in and they were able to then get turd obviously on that repel really excellent work shepherd had a little moment and i think he actually didn't quite spot that helmet over to the right side of that mirror window that was opened up. Otherwise, he would have been able to react a little quicker. Instead, then he stands up and he is a sitting duck in the middle of sight and he could get no help at all. That's exactly what those incendiaries were able to do from Hoven is to deny any kind of swing potential from that red position. That kept VP at bay. Really well executed again from Bleed. And they've shown now, at least on Skyscraper, and they're attacking on Clubhouse. Not on Bank, though, unfortunately. But that they've got the ability to attack 
these rounds. And again, they didn't need the plant. It goes with basically what we've seen from them statistically, only an 11% plant rate. I think Falcons is like the only other team that is below them, which was like a 3% Parker. So the fact is for Bleed, they're so strong on the gunplay, they don't need these plants, but clearly they set themselves up in that round. Virtus Pro couldn't really do much because they lost that player in lounge too early on in the round. 10 seconds remaining. We're not going to be seeing flawless rounds every single time, but the ebb and flow, as we want to call it, of these teams, Virtus Pro getting a flawless round back in round number one, and then being tantalizingly close to pulling it off again three separate other times on their attack, mm. ultimately falling short. Bleed get it done in round number eight with their own flawless round, so just going to show. You talked about this group being competitive. I would argue that from what we've seen so far, this is the toughest group. I agree. So far here. Obviously, people had their speculation as to which group would end up being the toughest before we actually got into the series. And before we got into SI, obviously, uh, a team with defending major winners is going to be a tough group, but I don't think people saw VP bleed and liquid all living up to the expectations. I also don't think people saw M80 blowing up as spectacularly as they did. I'm going to make a little statement here as we get a rush. Never mind, I'll postpone that, especially if this is a win. The rush so far a little unsuccessful because Pasha was watching that front door vigorously as Turd goes down as well. The uh, adrenal surge is not going to be all that effective from Hover. Two versus three, though. And now for Aspia Mentalist, they get to reset. It's not ideal. They would have liked to have the numbers advantage. They would have liked to have been, say, a 3v2 themselves. And unfortunately, the rush didn't quite go the way they would have liked. The good news is, because it was so fast, they can kind of now play the round again, but at a disadvantage. <laughs> a huge disadvantage, especially given the fact that Aspie has not been a huge factor in terms of kills, but it's like you get cast or cursed. Cast a blessing? I guess in that case, yeah. So, hey, he gets a kill, a second kill so far through nine rounds. And now you get a 2v2. You have a Nitro Cell in the hands of Dan. Free drones. And because there's only two defenders, they're kind of sitting a little bit more enclosed on site, so they're not going to be able to deny those drones either. And there's still over 60 seconds. This is very good from Bleed, and I like that they mixed it up a little bit too over that, that dirt rush that was a little bit unanticipated. Now, speaking of dirt, you can see the outline. Aspie with the kit. The most conventional play would have been to maybe drop Hatch Kitchen and go for a default plan, but they go over towards dirt to maybe catch VP off guard. It'll be a standoff for the final 50 seconds now. Flash goes out. Everything uh, about that flash wow. says we are dropping hatch. Everything about that flash says I'm coming from kitchen. Aspie then catches him off with a nice angle to turn. But a lovely shot from Shepard suddenly changes the course of this round. F not mine, annoying, has to be shot out. Aspie not sure if he's safe for the initial plan. Gets off and then back on. Shepard from church can't do nine from this position and will allow the plant to go down. Aspie now in a one versus one. Doesn't quite have the information he would like and so therefore doesn't move. He has to wait for the fire to go if he wants to emerge from blue. And there he goes! Oh, no! What a huge round oh from Bleed! Oh my God. One round away from tying it up, the defense still only winning a single round. Bleed is awake! Oh my goodness, what a shot! And a timeout immediately off the back of it as well from Virtus Pro, understanding that there are some issues here developing on Clubhouse. Four rounds in a row from Bleed after they had succumbed to losing 12 rounds in a row, Parker. The statement that I wanted to make going into that round was going to be, if Bleed make this comeback, it might very well be the best at the tournament, even though we've seen a 6-0 comeback. What's better than a 6-0 comeback is a 12-0 comeback. They had lost 12 rounds prior to these last four rounds, which means mentally that is quite exhausting. That is a very difficult proposition to think, hey, these guys have our number. But credit to Bleed, they've not given up, they've not given in, even despite the fact that they were only able to get one defensive round and the task at hand is to now go and win five attacking rounds while well, that task so far is being met. Yeah. Oh boy. Virtus Pro needs to get their head in this game as they've had a couple moments where things looked a lot closer than they would be, but boy, oh boy. I don't even know if you can look at the operator bands as being the culprit for this, right? VP knows that Bleed likes their shield, so they remove the Monty. The zombie is also banned out. Kaid, as an operator, makes defending this entire map a lot easier. 
but there's a Tubaru that can be used as well. And we haven't really seen much, if at all, of this operator who is exceptional at keeping walls closed. <laughs> Look at <laughs> Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Mentalist. <laughs> well, they're feeling confident. They're feeling Absolutely. confident. And look, at this point as well, I'm going to say, even if they lose, the respect has been regained. Yeah, After losing 12 rounds in a row, there would have been many people being like, oh, these guys, how are they going to playoffs? Apex suck. Oh my god, M80, how did they not make it out of the group? Well, clearly what we've seen from Bleed on the attack of Clubhouse against Virtus Pro has been exceptional. So these guys are a very good team, and that's what we were saying obviously throughout that little run that BP had. Now it's up to Virtus Pro. Okay, now we flip it back to them. The onus is now on them to offset this little charge that Bleed have made. So far, BP have done enough in this series to, of course, garner so much hype and plot it. But suddenly they've got a little task at hand here, which is to stop this little Bleed comeback. Last time we saw an execute on the top floor from Bleed, they didn't really need the Maverick whatsoever. Prone active. It was only a tiny bit of that fuel tank used by Mentalist. So instead, it's more about a gun and the flashbangs and having the Maverick just in case. So this is going to be the first time that we see a gym bedroom defense upstairs for VP. How do they play this out? Do they give up Logi and construction? Do they even opt to hold it? Now, a mirror on the board suggests that they're going to want to hold that jacuzzi wall and extend into bathroom. It's something that we saw from Bleed do half of, but then give up jacuzzi wall pretty quickly on. Yeah, because they didn't bring the bandit. That's the difference here. So Shepard on the bandit with the shockwave batteries over towards that jacuzzi wall. But of course, the Maverick's in play, so you can deal with that. They don't opt to bring the Thatcher. It is available, but it hasn't been brought. And no secondary EMPs. So double mirror window. So what we saw from Bleed when they defended this was they put the mirror window on the jacuzzi wall, but then they didn't have anybody actively inside a bathroom holding it the way that Virtus Pro is. Virtus Pro also has another black mirror inside a bathroom. So essentially two layers of defense at this point. They know where those shock wires are, especially with the IQ on the board on the side of bleed. But Mentalist is making his way over. You've just seen that he's been able to drop down towards that jacuzzi side alongside the Flores of Hoven. Now there's only 60 seconds left, Parker. So this is a little bit late in the round to be able to now turn your attention towards jacuzzi, but they do have presence, which is turfed up on the balcony looking in towards gym and bedroom. I really like Bleed's chances when things get ugly though, because this is a team that can take over games in terms of gun skill. And Virtus Pro- Oh, he drops. Virtus Pro knows how to get in the thick of it. Let's be frank. And they've got, I would say, better gunners on the side of Virtus Pro. However, Bleed knows how to get scrappy, and it's gonna get scrappy. All 10 players are still alive with 30 seconds to go, Jake. The huddle that we've seen from VP is towards logistics and along with top main stairs. That means they can play off of each other. Default plant coming through from Aspie on the overhead that we see here isn't going to be denied initially, and the Nitro Cell has gone over the mark. Plant is successful. Aspie does lose his life. Job done, though. No! Round is done. That is as scrappy as it gets, but it's also clean somehow. Dirty but clean. I don't know how it works, Parker. It's almost magic. The magic of the bleed come back. And suddenly now the scoreline is tied. Five to five in the most attacker-sided clubhouse that I have seen in 2024. <laughs> Across all regions in every game I've ever heard. I'll go so far as to say this is one of the most attacker-sided clubhouses I've ever seen. <laughs> Only a single round for the defenders so far. That is not usual. That is very abnormal. And in the post play, Bleed scramble so well. Look at turds to getting yeah. down below. And on IQ, you can pull out that scanner, see gadgetry if somebody's on the kit. Excellently done by Bleed. And we had some questions when mm. there's 30 seconds left as to how they're going to pull this off. And they do it. Well, to be fair, there was a little moment from VP as well where I thought, oh, okay, missed the mark. And that was the Nitro Cell thrown over from Jacuzzi Wall in towards default in gym. It went over that default plant towards more so the hatch. And that was an opportunity that then probably meant for VP the round was going to be lost. As soon as that plant does go down successfully, you've got balcony hold. It makes it really hard for the retake. But more importantly, really good call from Bleed to send Turd from the balcony watching into its gym bedroom down below because any kind of plant on a gym bedroom site is going to typically see one defender, especially with main stairs control, go for that bot hatch hold and go for the denial. Turd is then just waiting. He is able to deny. And of course, then Bleed are able to win the round. 5-5 five, five score line for what is now turning into one of the craziest series matches that we've had at the tournament. After 12 rounds in a row, 
For those that have maybe only just tuned in for whatever reason, you've missed a bit of a banger. First map was all bleed, second map was quite literally all VP. <laughs> 7-0, and which they then started 5-0 here on Clubhouse, five attacking rounds, which has now been met and matched by Bleed. 5-5 five, five scoreline, we go to Church Arsenal. I don't know what's going to happen anymore, Parker. No, I I'm I'm stunned with this matchup so far. I mean, I would have told you that this one was over, we're going to dinner, we're going to have a great time, Versus Pro's going to win like 7-1 or 7-2 or something, then we have, you know, literally do anything else with our lives. But now here we are, and... Pro, I thank goodness for that too. Bleed have tightened things up. And I mean, all we can really do is speculate, right? We don't know what's going on. When they say something like, oh, maybe, you know, Bleed realizes this match is in super high stakes, he really cares, like, let's get on with it. Maybe that is possible. I mean, maybe they start winning, maybe I'm completely wrong. It's hard to say. Should Bleed prevail? I would love to hear what their thought process was between that previous map and this one as to how things changed and how they were able to work what should be an unfavorable side to their advantage. Minute 20 and so now VP kind of like bleed in the first half. Turtle on site. No real roam from them. Not contesting up above. They're also starting to feel the pressure and the pinch and they're not winning the opening kills and they're not winning the engagements. So what do you naturally feel like you need to do? Sit site on Church Arsenal. It's a very normal thing to do. But of course in this meta you have Grim. You have Capital. You have ways to dislodge those that are on site and put pressure on them. 60 seconds remaining. This needs to stay kind of 5v5 territory for as long as possible for VP. If Bleed find a pick or two, they are going to have the numbers and makes it even more difficult. Shepard with the first gas babe over towards Dirt, but here comes Mentalist. We've seen this play before. Surely it can't work again. No, I mean, but the, the key part was keeping Reeves alive above. The big difference was that Shortest Pro had got the pick again. or two, but Turds is there looking to break double digits. Pasha rushes up. I like this change! And suddenly Virtus Pro has blunted the momentum of Bleed, but there's another body in sight. And Aspie can retrieve that diffuser and do something that Mentalist had attempted, but ultimately was cut short on. It all falls onto the shoulders of Reeves at this point. He was sensational before, but he doesn't see Joystick through the wall. And now he's upstairs, completely ineffective. He can't get to the diffuser in time. He's searching for picks, but will come up empty handed. Whether he secures the pick or not, it doesn't matter. It's series point for VP. And it's top spot in the group point as well for Virtus Pro fighting for that numero uno position. And a really, really solid round, probably from both teams. Again, Bleed opting to go for that Osa play through the little rotate hole in towards that position of Arsenal. Go for the plant down. And look, that time though, again, VP had already seen this play. Pasha got aggressive. He may not have got that particular kill, but then he was able to then rotate in towards Mentalist. Unfortunately for Bleed in that moment, it was just the movement from VP that was a lot better than last time out. Last time out, when we saw that play, they were a little bit more stagnant, more so towards the back of Arsenal. That time they started moving around, even despite the hatch play. Match point, Virtus Pro. But the balls on Bleed, Parker, to go for the same play inside of the same map, incredible. And it almost worked. If Mentalist gets that plant and he was just mere seconds away from doing it, they probably win that round. It really does come down to a coin toss. And again, I, I go back to how dominant these rounds have been. So you look at the score line and you have some questions as to whether or not these were close rounds. And for the most part, they were not. Most of these rounds have been very one-sided. And the score line literally shows you how this matchup has gone. The attackers are having a great time at the moment. Virtus Pro won a single round on defense so far. That is it. Bleed won a single round on defense so far. We're looking at dueling 5-1 halves at the moment. Unless, unless Virtus Pro can do something that we thought was easy, which is win more than one round on defense. VP's lineup is chock full of frustration. You're gonna have to deal with the Fenrir who's been in here constant. You got the Solus to deal with as well, but that is sloppiness. You don't drone out the bandit, who bandit tricks away the exothermic charge. Not only does Mentalist take some damage, but that's also cost you one of these two hard breaches that you have on him. Now you've got backup, you got two can openers for the Grim, you've also got the ace with three Selmas. So not all hope is lost, but that's a mistake that Bleed can't afford to make, because if they make a couple of them, VP ultimately ends up winning. But what's going on? Excuse me! Mentalist is in the sight. Hello? Three kills! You cannot teach that level of expertise. Oh, and Bleed pushes us to overtime with a flawless round. 
I need a replay, instant replay, like right now. Stat, what the hell has just gone on? In that moment, in that round, it's a real hold towards more that cash from CCT con tight for really from versus for the pro so what ends up happening is they go okay we've thrown this out we know that no one's really watching the breach there's no bandit here he's not tricking if there's no bandit here no one's really watching it either they had the hive launcher be out uh, go into effect as well and mentalist just sends it in what an incredible round when you consider the stakes, it's match point, Parker. Like, you make a mistake, you go for that kind of play, and it doesn't work. It is game over. We are done. The ball's on bleed in the last two rounds. One, to replay a, repeat a play they've already done, but then to also go for that rush play on match point for VP. VP showed a lot of presence towards Con with that electrified wall, and they also electrified CCTV. So off the back of that information from bleed, they felt like Jacuzzi was vulnerable, and it was. Attackers have discovered the location. This is certainly not the clubhouse I was expecting, Jake. And after seeing that second map, this certainly was not the outcome that I expected in the slightest. I think I speak for most people when I say that. Usually, I would look at the fact that Virtus Pro is going to spend two of these three overtime rounds on defense and say, that's excellent. But now I am saying, that's out Because so far, of these 12 rounds, two rounds have broken in favor of the defenders. That is it. Abnormal, to say the least. Lineup being rocked by Bleed is very similar to what they like to bring every single time they execute on Church. And I gotta say, they're quickening the pace right now. 20 seconds in, they're already opening up. Blue, a lot of confidence here from Bleed, which was absent from those first six rounds. I like it. But, Virtus Pro have tools to slow you down. They've got the evil eye cams, they've got the smoke, they've got bandit batteries to keep the church wall safe so that you have to do extra legwork. And if you look on the side of bleed, they have no EMPs. No real way to shake those bandit batteries off the wall. Very quickly, as we are indeed the last couple of rounds for the group stage. Spoiler alert in terms of what happened on stream B. Three, two, one. Fury 2-0 over loss one. An incredible result for APAC, for SBA and looking to do so once again here in terms of Bleed versus Virtus Pro. If Virtus Pro lose these next couple of rounds, Parker, W7M will top the group. W7M are Bleed fans. They're Joel fans. They like the fish. And they want to see Bleed win this. If Bleed do win this, then they avoid the lower bracket. And we will be seeing Bleed into the top portion of the playoffs. A lot at stake here in this overtime for what will be the final rounds of the group stage of Six Invitational 2024 and what a match that has developed. 90 seconds remaining. Now they get to work on the kitchen hatch. It wasn't long ago that Reaps and Asfi through six rounds amounted for a single kill. Now they're up to 15. How things change. And since then, Virtus Pro have been the ones getting smoked across the board. Supporting cast of Supporting cast of both of these teams showing up when needed. Mentalist gets two 3Ks. That amounts for six of his eight kills. And one of those rounds, it made all the difference. The other, it almost did. This time, he's going to be playing that same Osa, who's been so pivotal at making sure the Diffuser gets planted on the B-bomb side. And I think this time it might be more conventional in terms of what you can do with this Osa, which is the drop down with the hatch. You're far more likely to survive any initial fire towards your location as you are dropping the hatch when you have that shield in play, providing a little bit of cover here for Hoven as well. And Sandy is to go out. Hello, it's Reaps. Mentalist though, never mind. That shield could not stop the bullets apparently, and he does go down. The next option is for Aspi to follow suit into the default position, which is where he is currently located, but more pressure comes his way. So far, Virtus Pro doing a good job of stopping what is a really routine default push from Bleed, but they've got turns that are now dropping Moto. He gets involved. There's still 20 seconds. There is still time, and they can find the kills because Reef is just that guy. He is him in the moment in a two versus two though. Always in joystick in good spots and Turnstar didn't quite watch his right when he did want to cross the road. He needed to check both sides before making it to see if it was safe and Virtus Pro now get their spot for the top spot with these overtime match points. What a mess of a round as it finally comes down. You hot drop the hatch and kudos to Virtus Pro. They have joystick position inside a church with the wall shot open so that you can see from blue as well. And they read into this. Ultimately, there's not a lot of adaptation that comes in from bleed. So Virtus Pro are ready for it. They expect the drop and they have cut open that entirety of the wall so that when this comes in, a very one note song that is sung by bleed, it is answered by Virtus Pro. Win or lose, there's frustration. 
for VP. And Bleed have mounted an unbelievable comeback for it to fall apart at the final moment would be devastating for them, devastating for their fans. But the respect is there, Parker. That's the main thing because it was looking a little shaky in that moment when they had lost 12 rounds in a row through two maps and that respect has been regained, rightfully so, and restated going into the playoffs. But this one's not over yet. They go on to the defense now. Interestingly enough, of course, Church Arsenal was not a safe haven for them. They struggled on that in the first half. They go to Jim and Betrim for this overtime match point that Virtus Pro now have. They are one round away from securing top spot in this group, the group of death with so many talented teams. They want to be atop that pile, which would dislodge W7M from the number one spot into second. For Bleed, you lose this round or the next, and you are fourth in your group. My, my. Never did I expect this result on this map. I don't know if you saw it going the same way. I doubt it, given the things that we've talked about so far, but what could have been a relatively quick affair between these teams has now gone down to the wire. If not the absolute wire, that would be if Bleed prevails on this round. Bleed on defense. Statistically, I want to say this is terrible. Furtis Pro should, in this instance, lose, but that's not the case. Attacking teams have been doing very well on Clubhouse. I really really am at a loss for words. Well, one of the successful takes here from Virtus Pro back in the first half of Jim Bedroom was because they overloaded that cash and CCTV position, especially from top red. This time around, Bleed aren't putting all of their eggs in that one basket. In fact, they've actually given up that position relatively early in the round. A minute 45 seconds remaining, and they have gotten off of Cash and Top Red. Pasha live droning that one. So having now taken that lesson from earlier in the first half, they are now playing sight. That puts them in a good position to be able to defend the more fast-paced attack from Virtus Pro later in the round. Joystick getting a live drone down in basement from Always, and he's going towards main stairs, maybe thinking better of it. Time will become a factor though, Virtus Pro don't start to make their way over towards Con. Joystick. Joystick. Hunting down below, you'd be... A lot of roof play still. Yeah, you'd be inclined to think that it would be a church defense, right? Because that tends to be the bomb site the teams go to right off the rip, but that's not the case. This has been anything but a conventional set of rounds on defense. So not a surprise to see Bleed go to what should be the tertiary bomb site upstairs, but maybe for them. Three nitro cells for what it's worth. Really good on this site as well in stopping that default plant behind Jim, both either from over the top or from down below from the hatch. Joystick now inside a construction. They will coalesce around this position. And, oh my, no way Pasha's able to creep up like this. A pre-fire and he gets the down, but the guns for Bleed are simply better. A 3v2, Virtus Pro are actually in the lead right now when it comes to kills. And it's up to Always to get the job done with the diffuser. Mentalist will retake from the site. He had a 3k here on Jim previously. He starts by picking off Joystick. Could we see the makings of a 15th round? Mentalist and Hoven just need to wait. 20 seconds left, and there goes Always. Shepard, the only one to watch. He's isolated a player over towards bathroom. Nitro Cell goes off. It necessitates him getting off. Mentalist with two. Shepard being softened up in this position. They have all the information as to where he is in a vault in. It's Hoven to send us to a 15th round. And a seriously earned 15th round as well for both teams. 7-3 on Skyscraper at the hands of Bleed, 7-0 on Bank, Virtus Pro clean, did not put a foot wrong. Both teams winning their respective map picks. And so Clubhouse becomes the eternal power struggle between two teams that have shown so much at this tournament thus far. One fighting for top spot, the other fighting for so much respect for them and for APAC and for, of course, a better placing inside of the group. And it's Mentalist. No surprises there. One of the veterans on this roster. And once again, calm when it comes to the defense late into the round, where one mistake can change it. Win and lose the round based off of your decision making. Well earned, well played, and Turd cannot believe what is taking place for the very final game of the six invitational group stage, Parker. It comes down to the very final round. Literal final round. The Fury and Los match is over. It's just you and I here, baby. Everyone's gone home. Everyone's gone home. We are in the building all alone except for production who works infinitely harder than us and much longer hours tirelessly. And we are so close to a conclusion. Three minutes to see if VP or Bleed take what has been an unbelievable matchup. And I mean it.
unbelievable. I could not believe that this matchup would happen. I, I know that it seems like an absurd word to use, but it's true. Yeah. And, and one thing very quickly as well is everyone has pulled their weight. You might look at Aspire as well, 6 and 11, but playing a bit more of a supportive role here on Clubhouse is a big reason for that. No one else has really gone super crazy mode either. Yeah, Rip's on 12, but everyone else is around that 8 to 10 or 11 kills, Parker. So it's a real even spread performance for both teams. As we go into the final round, Reaps makes his way in through stock, and we go to Jim Bedroom defensively for Virtus Pro. Mentalist will look to try and open up this CCTV wall. And we go into the final moment, as Dan is on the roam on the Solus, very much down below in Church Arsenal. Reload. I don't know if I expect a quick round here. I'm relatively certain that I'm both reloading. teams will take this very slow and come to blows relatively early. Oh my, Reap surviving a scare. Oh. The wall blows up, courtesy of Dan. Reap scattered away. Joystick. I mean, sometimes it comes down to these little timing moments, doesn't it? Always. Joystick with the reload, holding this angle, one down below in lounge, which is Reap, so his position is known. Now, the opening kill onto Aspie, not ideal for Bleed. You lose those Selmas, can be very important, especially against that mirror later on. And a good start, at least, for Virtus Pro. They're making contact. They've got good position in terms of map control, top red. And more importantly for Bleed, they don't know really what to do at this point. 90 seconds left. Do you go for the clear cash red, or do you go for sight? That's a great question. You've got time at your disposal, but always will get quite active and catch turrets still looking the wrong way and manage to get away from the breach as well. As the bullets come on in, Mentalist now in pursuit with Reaps, using oh. little remains of his HP. Oh, Mentalist. Mentalist is choking him. He what? wins the duel, though, Hoven. or Hoven does, rather. And suddenly, it's a 3v3 with just a little over a minute to go. Still, the remaining players from Virtus Pro all nestled close enough into the bomb site, the bomb holding these positions with the mirror window at their disposal. Bleed have to start to pick away at this defense. No Nitra cells, one impact at the hands of Dan on the Solus. Four drones remaining, all up and all available here for Bleed, or at least a couple of three indeed now remain. This is a big moment. 45 seconds left. They can go for the conventional approach if they want over towards Jim, but the way that Mentalist is lined up, I'm not sure if that's going to be the play. Flashes from Hoven to maybe try and draw out some of these defenders. Double push in logistics. Pasha, he is the man to maybe break the hearts of Bleed here, or can they double swing clear him out and have the advantage? Where's the trade? It has to come immediately, and it doesn't. Really smart for Pasha as well to break that window on the way back in towards site. 20 seconds left, but it is indeed Hoven that gets that kill onto Pasha because he had to rotate, and Mentalist can now go for this plan. There shouldn't be too much in terms of denial from the below position of Dan. He's only got one impact, but with that Solus, he can spot where that Diffuser goes down. Mentalist needs to get this kill and get on the plan, but he can't find it. Virtus Pro, though, they find top spot of this group, a group that has so many juggernauts. They dislodged W7M from that top spot, forcing them into second. They are the best of the best right now. Virtus Pro have been able to win out an absolute classic. Are you upset or are you astonished at that result? If you're bleed, Mentalist immediately shaking off the headset, his face says, wow. And we got treated to a matchup that was far more competitive and far more exciting than at points it looked like it deserved and it looked like was even possible. But that machine, it does not break. Virtus Pro shows why they have for so long been consistently a top tier team. And despite the scare, and despite a team that is on the ascendancy, as Bleed continues to improve, it's the old stalwarts of Virtus Pro who win it out today. And it really does highlight how far Bleed can go in this competition, mixing it with the very best once again for every single match in their group Bleed. Win or lose, they went to all three maps, Parker. They were constantly a threat in a group with so much power. The juggernauts right now are Virtus Pro as they top the best of the best. And for the final time of the group stage, we go back to the desk. Well, that one was a lot closer than anyone could have anticipated after 12 rounds straight from Virtus Pro from map two, went all the way down to the wire on Clubhouse. A very scary game, no doubt. Yeah, I completely agree. We played great on attack. We thought, okay, the game is done. Mm -hmm. Defense, 90% win rate. <laughs> we, let's just enjoy the last round. Oh yeah, about that. And then something happened. <laughs> we were reading absolutely everything what they were doing. We said like, on one attack when they pushed the gym from the jacuzzi bridge, we said they will push gym from jacuzzi bridge. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know why we didn't watch that. Right. So I'm kind of mad right now because <laughs> we were reading everything, but yeah. not doing the right things. So we need to work on that. But mm -hmm. of, co of course, respect to the bleed guys. I even before the tournament, I knew that will be a hard game against them. Julio is a genius. Other guys, like the players, are crazy, mm. insane name. It was a nice game, and a lot of respect to them. Yeah, well, uh, this was a tough series overall to begin with. I mean, obviously ended on a crazy note, but I, I want to talk broadly about the tournament first. It seems like you guys have been working in a lot of new maps to your pool. We're seeing some stuff that we hadn't seen from Virtus Pro. You're playing Skyscraper, which was the first game of this series. You're playing a lot of Border nowadays. Um, why now for the deliberate choice to start working some of these maps in, especially for something like Border, which you guys have avoided for a very long time? I think uh, we were working on them like during the whole period. Mm. We just were working hard on them before the Invitational because we knew that it's going to be uh, BO3 in the group stage. Mm -hmm. So we will not play our comfortable maps, of course, just people will ban Clubhouse Bank and we will play something else. Yeah. So we just had to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, if we didn't practice bad maps for us, we were not uh, able to go through this crazy group. Well, you said people, they will be banning Clubhouse Bank. Today they didn't. Today you got to play both Clubhouse yes. and Bank. And I think your attacks, I mean, they speak for themselves. 11 attacking rounds in a row across those two maps. Um, it felt like a back to basics type moment for you. Was there anything like special that you were bringing to this game or was it just classic VP clean attacks? Uh, no, we were not like preparing. We were preparing, of course, some like exact rounds that they want to play. But uh, after the Skyscraper, we understood that we need to just focus on our game because we are thinking too much about how enemy will play, how we will do the round and things like that and attacks going wrong. So we just decided to do our default attacks that will work 100% and uh, stay focused, listen more to the sound because we were talking a lot during Skyscraper and didn't hear some pushes mm -hmm. that enemy team did. And it was like all the mistakes we noticed from Skyscraper and decided to just play bank like the fresh list. It's a new map, new game, just focus, for, forget about the Skyscraper, let's just do our best. Yeah, and one last question for me. With this win, you guys secure upper bracket start to the playoffs. You'll even get that by. I believe you're getting first place in the group now. Um, how important was that for you guys to have that safety net now? If you lose even one series in the playoffs, you will get to go down to the lower bracket. Uh, I mean, for me to get out of this crazy group is already <laughs> uh, insane because during the majors, we got grouped both mm -hmm. times. Even though we played some hard opponents like and lost to them, I thought maybe we can't win anymore on LAN against strong teams, but I guess we can. So I'm just happy anyway uh, that we qualified through this group. I don't care like first place or third place. This group was crazy. Everyone deserved to be here and to win, but only the better team wins on cool. the day. Fantastic. They do. They do. And you have. You have <laughs> consistently won on the day. Dan, congratulations on yet thank another you. victory. Was there anything you'd like to say before we let you go? I want to thank all of our fans. Uh, we read everything you comment. Uh, we appreciate your support. We try our best uh, for you and we will just keep improving and hope we will go far this tournament. Dan, thank you very much for that. And congratulations on topping your group. Thank you. All right, now we get to start to break this one down a little bit with our two analysts here. What a series that was. We were going, okay, Jesse, can we speak candidly here? We can. We were almost asleep like Clubhouse. <laughs> that was, that was going to be a snooze fest. And then until it wasn't, until it wasn't. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we saw seven in a row through Bank. We came into Clubhouse and we got five in a row back to back to back. We surely thought this was done. I mean, we came down here. Yeah half an hour ago now. Yes. We were ready to get into this desk segment. To which we got abused, by the way. We did, we did. The Bleed players were not so happy about that. They won their first round uh, on Clubhouse, round number six, and they said, why the desk come back? We're pulling this back. And they were right. They did pull this back. One round short, they couldn't bring it all the way. 15 it took to get through Clubhouse. In the end, Virtus Pro were the better team, but man, Bleed put up a fight. An attacker sided club, not something that we've been used to seeing so far in the current climate bleed what a fantastic performance there they are never out you just cannot count this team out mm -hmm. until all is said and done they did a fantastic job of resetting that mental as you mentioned jesse they lost 11 rounds in a row inside of the series and i was thinking boy this is going to be a quick best of three at this yep. point because we are not seeing a lot of rounds. <laughs> but slowly by slowly and surely they managed to drag it back uh mentalist for me live game 
game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Mentalist played out of his mind, and one of the benefits about coming back so early yeah. as, as us as analysts is we were here and we got to listen to the players as yeah. they were playing, and I will say, Mentalist in the server, great, also in the comms. It's fantastic. Insane. Like a general on yeah. some of those rounds, directing the players where they were going to go. He really took charge on some rounds, but he also wasn't the only one. There were other players. There was one round in particular where Reaps really took charge and started commanding the team on what to do in that 2v2, 2v3 clutch, actually, with Asfi and Mentalist down on the basement. Yep. He had so much calming going on in that, and I think that just speaks to, like, how much goes on behind the scenes, even in a round. If you see people clutching, there's so much more going on behind it. Yeah, 100%. The, the comms were actually immaculate. You were saying there, you know, resetting the mental. I don't even think there was a point they had to reset. That's where their mentality is at, which is kind of terrifying to think. But it is time for us to have a look at the groups and how they've all panned out. Again, a uh, sorry, of Group C, my apologies. Uh, reminder that going into this, they did have the head-to-head -head against W7M. So it yep. is 100% confirmed that Virtus Pro top their group. Fantastic showing. 11 points coming through. This was an extremely difficult group too. Everybody called this the group of death, and I think it clearly yeah. was. Uh, we saw so many, so much carnage. Those top four spots, so close. 11, 11, 9, 8, and M80, uh, the group of death, they're the ones that, that died. If we look at the top of the day, it's what that actually looks like at the start, and to now know where we are, mm -hmm. and just understand that over the course of the last five or six hours, we've literally decided who's going home, who's top, and we've put every single team in that place. This yeah. group has been tight and i think that, that last map certainly showed it yeah it honestly that's the thing i think that ties this group together the most is just watching that series right then it is time to have a look at the intel play of the game and i think that it's one that we're quite familiar with <laughs> god uh, ask me all the way back on uh, on map number one skyscraper again the crazy clicks with the uh, with the montane 3k coming through this last one as well uh in the 1v1 against pasha who had already dropped the triple kill this round right Pasha is hot, but unfortunately, he does not have the cover that, of course, uh, Aspie has with both the shield and the bar covering him there. Great performance. I'm not sure that we should be endorsing Monty's dropping the shield. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad for our rank. I don't want to get home, load into ranked, and just see Monty's dropping the shield thinking that they're him. Yeah. That is not what I want to see. <laughs> but too. certainly hats off to Aspie for today. They are he. They are he, to be fair. And I just want to also very quickly comment on your earlier comments about Mentalist. Mm -hmm. The reminder that he is probably one of the longest standing members in APAC that we have. That right there, that goes to show what happens when you come to events consistently, when you continue yeah. to put in the work, and when you build a strong team around a strong leader. It is time to have a look at the groups now, that is correct. Not just Group C, but all of the groups. Quick reminder, we don't have the points here, but we do have the rankings. And this is finalized, correct? We've had yes. all the games complete now, including on the B stream, so we have the, the standings locked down. Keep in mind, first place will go into the upper bracket they'll get a bye yep. through the first round. Second and third, they'll be playing the first round of the upper bracket. Fourth place, start in the loser's bracket. Very difficult spot. If you lose even one time, you are gone. And fifth place, unfortunately, they're going home. Oh my word, there's something I've just seen here that I never thought I would ever see in a million years. Fury have ended second in their mm -hmm. groups, Group D. I'm proud of the boys. Yeah, I think the Fury loss game was certainly one to go back and watch. Obviously, we were covering different things at the time, but very very close indeed. These are teams that we are going to be saying goodbye to, though. And I think there's maybe a couple of predictable ones in there, but there's maybe a surprise or two as well. Yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, four different regions sending a representative home. It's particularly rough for the Japanese fans. Scar's their only representative here at the Six Invitational. They will be going out very, very early. Um, and, you know, there were some strong performances from the teams that uh, that were limited anyways. Certainly things to work on as well for a lot of them, but uh, just coming to SI, being able to come to Sao Paulo and uh, experience this, I'm sure are going to be experiences uh, that they will never forget. Yeah, well, especially, you know, there's uh, two APAC teams in there, and I can just speak on behalf of watching APAC for the last five years. It is crazy what these events do to uh, the teams and players that go to them. They have a newfound respect for the game. They have a newfound respect for the understanding of what it means to be a professional player in Rainbow Six. So... You know, a shout out to the teams that unfortunately will not be uh, partaking in the playoffs. GKM80 
D plus, and of course, scars. But uh, that's okay. Sometimes it happens, Ollie. We've got to go from 20 to 16. We've got to find out who is going to win the whole thing and who's going to lift the hammer. You know, we've got to say bye to the teams on the way. Thanks for coming. Thanks for playing. But ultimately, we're trying to send everyone home apart from one. Yeah, at the end of the well, day... two would be good, then we can have a grand finals. <laughs> but, you know, you know what I mean? You get the sentiment. <laughs> let's, let's, let's play with two teams. Yeah, at the end of the day, for somebody to win, somebody's got to lose. Yeah. Winning would mean uh, nothing if there weren't teams that tried to do what you did and failed. So, uh, it's just the nature of sports, unfortunately. That's a nice little quote. Made it myself. Yeah, did you? Uh, yeah. All yours? All me? This is unbelievable. All right, well, the group stages are now pretty much done, Dustin, by pretty much. It's only one more thing to do. Final thoughts, gentlemen, on how things have gone. Ollie, you first. Um, yeah, I'll kick things off. I think it's been a pleasure to come on and uh, to uh, participate inside of the group stage. It's been some fantastic siege. I think we've seen a little bit of everything. We've had some thrills, we've had some spills, we've had some upsets. We had a 7 0 today that we got to watch. Uh, can you ask for much more out of a group stage for SI? I don't think so. No, I would agree 100%. I think the games have been absolutely fantastic in Sao Paulo for the first tournament in quite quite a while to come back to Brazil. The games have absolutely delivered and uh, it's been a blast, of course, working the desk with you both as well through the group stage. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, just very excited for playoffs. Looking forward to it. That's it. We'll keep it short and sweet. Thank you very much for joining us for the group stages. That is done and dusted. We have our 16 teams for playoffs. They start on Monday and you will not want to miss out on the following week of Siege. So clear that schedule. Make sure you've got time for yourself to watch these matches because they are going to be barn burners. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. Please take care, stay safe, and good night.